There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. Oh, yes. On the left. <laughs> That's when the cannibalism started. Talking about friends. Friend. I, I want to talk about Dr. Pepper. I want to talk about Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we talking about friends? Yeah, Dr. Pepper, not a doctor at all. Get away from my wife. You know what I realized <laughs> last episode? Are we recording? You know what I realized last episode is that when Gilles de Ray yeah. would do his like performance before killing all the children, right? right. Like his mm. his grizzly, his McCabe play that mm. he would put on, you know, we dance around and hang them up. It's not good, right? Oh, no. But I just realized upon finishing the Jared Fogle documentary. You've been a real Fogle head lately. <laughs> this guy's a Fogle head. <laughs> Honestly, really, wow. it, you really savored it. I mean, it I, dev- really, I devoured wow. that thing in a no. night just to get it over with. Each one, oh, <laughs> every five minutes, I mean, Nat would just sit in silence and go, Mm, I can almost like, hear Henry. Like, I, can, mm, I can hear Henry oh. screaming at the TV. How is that a crime? How is this a crime? <laughs> how is that a crime? Um, no, I understand. You want to savor every pound. Every you, pound. You really but I, realized, I like fat, Jared. Yeah, we all did. <laughs> I know. Because that was before the crimes. Right. But I realized him showing the pants. <laughs> That was his Gilles de Ray fucking show. <laughs> that was his yeah. show that Aww. got all the kids just been like, whoa, look at them pants. And you think right. about that, it was just big ass pants. Big ass and, pants. I'm watching this this whole time. This is it. This is the whole spell. Gilles de Ray had a private army. Flagons of land. Sure. Just, you know, flagons. eight castles. Flagons. How like, many miles are flagons? It, it is a, uh, a flagon is a cup. A okay, flagon great. is how long it takes a fat man to walk across a valley. <laughs> I don't know the math, all right? I'm not in medieval math world, right? But that's the idea, getting all the kids all frothed up because uh-huh. they're looking at how big them pants are. And yeah. they're like, man, wow. that man used to fit in them pants. I could play in them pants. Yeah, that, that, and then you end up playing in them pants. Jared from Subway <laughs> certainly got the kids all frothed up. Great assessment there. Welcome to the last podcast on the left, everyone. Ben hanging out with Henry and Marcus. Today we're on to part three and the final gosh darn part. Of Shield Array. Mm, mm. Excellent. Take a look at these big old pants. Wow, look at those pants. So when we last left Gilles de Ray, his career as a mass child murderer was in full swing. And these murders had gone on completely. Yeah, full swing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was only the 1400s, okay? And these murders and these murders had gone on completely unfettered due to the enormous wealth and power he mm. both inherited from Jean de Crayon and what he'd earned during his time at Joan of Arc's side during the Hundred Years' War. Which is okay. really why I have been siding with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, <laughs> nemesis. That you she's are been siding fighting. with, what is it, Sanderson? Sanderson, the one Terry one's Sanderson. Terry Sanderson. He's um, a horrible person. But he said he needed to take down all of these celebrities on these ski slopes because if we don't check these celebrities, they go to their islands <laughs> and start molesting children. And that's when I knew mm. the truth got too much. Uh, and Gwyneth Powell had to shut it all the way down with her fixers, her snow-based fixers. And just Give so everyone a third dollar. And just so everyone knows, that man he, Henry is not joking. That man did go on on the, to the stand and say that he had to put a stop to all of this pedophile island business, which is why he attacked her with his skis. Well, <laughs> and of course, that is not where pedophile island is. Uh, pedophiles like warm weather. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. They do. They're they're a lazy butt. It's a Gabbana shirt crowd. Yes, it is. Now, the castles in which Gilles committed these crimes looked appropriately evil from the outside. Dracula-like fortresses Ooh. made of gray stone, constantly surrounded by lightning flashes and thunderbolts. Wolves howling in the night. Ah, the children of the night. <laughs> what beautiful music they made. Ah, I am coming. I am coming. Honk, honk. Uh, oh, why is there a pig there? Oh, 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 yeah, you're doing all this by the pigs. <laughs> oh, it's just the man dressed as a pig. Yeah. But inside, Gilles de Ray had created a sort of Neverland by way of Citizen Kane. Ooh. Now, if you've ever seen the footage from inside Michael Jackson's Neverland, mm. remember mm-hmm. they g- took the cameras in there. It was shown in the Finding What Leaving Neverland documentary. Oh, it was yeah. a very Martin Bashir, who was a very controversial figure. Let's be honest about that. We can be. But if you've seen that, you know that his house was filled to the brim with these terrifying childish artifacts. He had all these gumball machines, all those animatronic clowns. Yeah, you know, it's a. 
It's a temple to molestation. It is. Okay, well, hold on. Now, gumball machines are not indicative of molestation. Oh, it no, don't malign a gumball gumball machine. Uh, 20, one, tell me, you 20, tell me. Yeah. No, one gumball no. machine in a rumpus room is fun. That's fun. 20 is a systematic grooming mechanism. Because <laughs> then the it's person everywhere loves you go. You've been like, oh, don't worry. He, he, he wants to come. Oh, yeah, have a gummy bear. Have a little gummy bear. Ask the screen, subscribe. Oh, you got distracted. Mm-hmm. Gumballs Ew. are still representative of innocent childhood memories. Sure. And let's not ruin that, shall we? <laughs> but the weird thing about the house, I don't know if y'all noticed this, but the fixtures and the wallpaper inside Michael Jackson's house, it was very suburban. It was yeah. like old lady gross. Well, it kind of like, makes you feel like, to be honest, like you're at a Nana's house. Yes, exactly. Mm. And Gilles de Ray's castles were much the same way, except he had decidedly more adult taste because he was, after all, he was trying to impress fellow nobles. He was not trying to seduce mm. children. Yeah, he didn't do any of the pants stuff for the kids. <laughs> Seduction. Each room was hung with gold cloths that cost 80 coins each. Whoa, 80 wow. gold coins. That's, wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, we got to give a dragon 80, 80 gold yeah. coins. It's like the witch of three. Go, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> rescue a princess, and then next thing you know, you got curtains, I guess. You don't give any gold coins to any of to I I dragon. I'm, I'm sorry. You brought up I'm the so fucking sorry. witcher, bro. I not brought he knows that's his I'm world. so sorry. No, no I'm playing no. Persona 5 Royal. Yeah. It's all in the end. No, the villagers give me dragon. They give me gold coins. He has a finite amount of breath. I... <laughs> well, these rooms were all filled with fine furniture, painting, statues, books, and precious manuscripts. And Gilles kept a near constant employment of jugglers, singers, and actors to keep him entertained. Woo. Well, this is the issue, right? Um, this is where we get to the Harvey Weinstein part of our story. Last week, obviously, we're segueing. We're going from a Fogel mm-hmm. to a Weinstein. Okay. This is where Fogel we see Weinstein. how, but this is to me of the seeds that he's dropping that shows that he's guilty. This shows that what he is creating. because he has jugglers around? Yeah, it's just the, it's the 15th century equivalent of having a TV in every room. It's, you're going to see that it doesn't stop there, right? I do like of the course. idea of throwing a shoe at a juggler so it changes channel. Mm. <laughs> yes, that would be fun. Chainsaws. Yes. Do the chainsaw channel. But it's the idea of surrounding yourself with an entertainment mechanism that makes you look far more fun and engaging and interesting than you should be. It's the I fact that know. you are I... offering, but you'll see as it, okay. it escalates. I'm going to need some evidence like the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. I, I, I'll i bring up an animation. Because I think it you're right. It costs 50 grand to make one of those. I feel like Peacock is an actor. Hulu, that's a juggler. Netflix, that's going to be your, what was the other thing? Singer. All of these are poor, poor <laughs> replacements for the juggler and the, and the no, singer. I know, um, but I'm just saying you have three different channels to work with. Well, Gilles also kept an open house to nobles and commoners alike at whichever of his 24 residences where he happened to be residing, mm. where anyone could partake of good food or wine. This was seemingly a Christian principle that he learned from his time with Joan of Arc, but it also helped with local morale. It was a bribe, basically. Sure. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But as we said again and again during episode two, one of the few things that Joan of Arc and Gilles de Ray actually shared was a love of the theatrical. Although oh. Gilles' theatrical impulses weren't confined to the battlefield like they were with Joan mm. or to his later career in the theater. Yes, now yeah. is when the show begins. Yeah. Uh-huh. Almost before we get to the show, we have to get to the pedophile church. Yay! Oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> now, this is to me the ultimate example of why he is guilty. Mm. Well, to perhaps give himself a bit more of a Joan of Arc sheen, Gilles de Ray founded his own extraordinarily swanky church. Ooh. It was, however, also a cover, another funnel for innocent victims. So Gilles cheekily named it the Chapel of the Holy Innocents. I now, like it. to place this in time, remember that they've, you know, they fought all the wars. Technically, Gilles de Ray should be a hero amongst his countrymen. Joan of Arc, though, we know, is currently being buried. They don't, like, she was executed like out her. at the trail. They wanted to keep a fucking tight lid on this Joan of Arc story because they're trying to basically separate themselves from this mythos, this yeah. idea that we owe things to this heavenly woman that may or may not be an agent of God, blah, blah, blah. But Gilles de Ray at that time probably should have been viewed as somebody who fucking, you want to be around. Mm-hmm. But we now know that he has been utterly kind of kicked out all these mm. spaces. He's good. They kind of give him a perfunctory little position on some board somewhere. But mostly he's just kind of like 
being kept away from these important stories. Now, the thing is, is he starts this Church of the Innocents. Everybody knows that he's this weird dude. He's spending, like, he's already starting to hemorrhage money. Right. But it's not his. It's like, it's his family's money, which is kind of a complicated thing at the time period. It's complicated. Yeah, because yeah, it's all like, it's... It's his, but it's not his. It's like, you're a chunk of a country. And so you spending money sure. like on stupid shit is emptying the coffers of a gigantic like system, metropolitan yeah. system. And so he's already doing it. When he starts well, his I, church, I would t- honestly, I would say the system is more agrarian. Mm. Agrarian. And that means when you tie your shoes professionally. That's yeah, equestrian. <laughs> ah, very good. Uh, we're great here. But then he started the Church of the Holy Innocents, and he wanted it to be an official church. But the thing is, the Vatican does not lightly give that, because mostly you need a priest to do that. You need somebody who's actually connected someone to oh, the yeah. church infrastructure. He had none of that. And hmm. he started this Church of the Holy Innocents, and everyone's like, why are you doing this? Why are you making this? And it was freaking people out. Okay. And this is the reason why. Well, with this chapel, Gilles would both recruit beautiful young boys, as was his wont, and he would also simultaneously satisfy his love of ecclesiastical music. Oh. Specifically, Gilles loved the hot pipes of yore <laughs> to the wow. extent where he had a portable organ made, which took only six people to carry. That's this is not bad. Portable. This is Marcus's dream. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I would love to have someone who carried like six guys who carried an organ. Where, like if I yeah. could have an organ on tour and then a man who could just play organ for me at all times. You want that? Yeah. This is your life? All That'd the time. Fun. <laughs> it would make him happy. Let, him have, Let one, him have a big organ. I mm-hmm. want one pair of innocent big pants. <laughs> oh, you have a bunch. How <laughs> Rokers mean. Oh, what? Oh. Yep. You did have pairs of innocent big pants, but you burned all of them. Torched them. <laughs> you torched your big pants? And they burned for days. I'm sure they did. <laughs> Well, out of the 30 people who ran the Chapel of the Holy Innocents, most had been collected by Gilles during his travels, and many had been recruited because of their combined abilities of keeping their mouth shut and their willingness to do anything for money. This is a group of criminals. Yeah. Yeah. Each one was dressed in the finest clothing, trailing robes of scarlet lined with squirrel fur. Ooh, who's oh, that? Oh, at oh, the time, oh. was quite fancy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 wow. It's like Kevin Spacey. Wow, oh. that's, a, that's incredible. Yeah. Ooh, wow, are you wearing possum today? Oh. Oh, yeah, wow. how do you know? What? Oh, playing dead. <laughs> well, I think at the time, squirrels were not quite the rats of the park that they are Whoa, now. Oh, they're not rats now. But You're squirrels? anti-squirrel. I'm not anti-squirrel. You've been anti-squirrel I... since day one. Anti-pigeon, anti-squirrel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, Marcus. I know you're honestly, I know that you, again, precious breaths tonight. Yeah, I'm precious breaths. Squirrels are adorable. Squirrels are not rats. Squirrels are adorable, but squirrels are also very aggressive when you're in the park. Squirrels are the <sighs> baseball players of the small animal world where they get a lot of ass and they're always on the road. They really do. <laughs> they really do. I mean, I love it when I see a squirrel in my backyard, but I there do you go. remember the Central Park squirrels could be quite aggressive. Oh, oh yeah, oh, they'll gosh. nibble at you. No. They'll fuck your wife. Oh, right. yeah, especially during COVID. Jesus, no. those squirrels are mean. Yeah, I feel like maybe it's an COVID. indictment on your weakness <laughs> because they're squirrels and you're a man. A squirrel can really destabilize them. <laughs> well, additionally, the services were held in the most opulent church then in existence, which is saying quite a bit yeah. when we're talking about the Catholic Church yeah. in the 15th century. Yeah, wasn't this like kind of peak, almost peak Catholic? Oh, no, when they, I mean, they were running the power, damn world, uh, right? Powerful times with oh, the Catholic Church. And this is peak waste well, for the Catholic Church as th- well. This is to me, this is like the equivalent if I, like, in modern America, if I went and, like, opened up my own rogue McDonald's, like, and I just, like, and it did all the same signage. McDowell's. But yeah, like, McDowell's. Like, McDowell's. if I opened my own McDowell's, but then, like, the main function of my McDonald's was to funnel children to for me to have sex with. Right. Like, it would be like that. Where, like, the church is like, what? hey, listen. We don't care if you're fucking these kids. They really didn't. Right? Because we They didn't. Huh? But, hey, you didn't get a permit for this Fuck, kid licensing. fucking chat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that was, that's not good. That really was the whole thing. Nobody cared that he was mm. killing children. What Nobody. they cared about was that he hadn't consulted Catholic authorities. And the Pope was double pissed because Gilles had appointed himself as bishop. It's really well, weird. And the thing is, so it's really weird. At the time period, that's, that's like the key here is that it's one of those where everyone's just like, hey, bro. Hey, hey, hey. You know, like with Michael Jackson, they're like, you, you we thought you'd be putting out like an electronica album. Why are you <laughs> outfitting this teddy bear room? Well, uh, what did he do? Get himself a big hat? 
<laughs> How do you make yourself bishop? You just, you just go, go, I'm bishop. Yeah. That's all you got to do. That's I all mean, you got to do. I trust him just as much as Bishop Dolan. That motherfucker is always at the Met Gala. He's covered in gold chains. I think oh, you. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. Leave Timothy know. alone. Fuck no. Him. <laughs> Fuck him. He's demonic. <laughs> yeah. You call yourself a bishop. They, I think you, you're legally allowed to call yourself a bishop if you say amen when you come on the back of a child. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's Henry fine, Zabrowski. right? We can use that. That's no, fine. No, that is bad. We can do that. And with that, Gilles moved himself from the realm of nuisance to real problem. And he made the first enemy that actually had the power to help bring him down, the church. Ooh, big enemy to have. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And yeah. it's more like, why, why? You know, why That's do all, this, doll? I mean, why are you the doing The word hubris yes. applies hubris. quite a bit. But of course, Gilles de Ray wasn't satisfied with the pageantry of the Catholic Church to satisfy his theatrical needs. Gilles was about to enter the world of entertainment, <laughs> using his relationship with Joan of Arc as the bridge. Let oh. me entertain you. No, I didn't. Let me oh, make you smile. It's okay, honey. He's an actor. You can trust him. <laughs> yeah, oh. you're coming my wet knees. Oh, God. It's just because it's, it's flop sweat. Yeah. But like any celebrity worth their salt, Gilles actually forced one of his servants to act as his body double. Yes, that's my dream. Oh, it's my only, the only you thing. You want to be a body double or have a body it's double? It's cool to have a body double that yeah. goes out and does shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Discarding the servant's old name, whatever it may have been, hmm. Gilles began calling his double Ray Le Erio. What does that mean? Uh, it's just kind of, you just call him like, I think it little might Ray. mean little Ray. Yeah, it means little Ray. Yeah. Little yeah. Ray? I yeah. have no idea what my it means. My, 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 my boy. Be, little Ray. What's my little Ray? Gilles a tiny Ray. Jill too. That was before they understood the power of the sequel. Wow. But then all of a sudden, once you get to quantum mania, it starts to burn out. I agree with that. <laughs> and he dressed him in appropriately splendid clothing when Doray needed a substitute. <laughs> this gave Jill a fun game to play. Because when Ray Le Erio played Gilles in public, Gilles could be both actor oh. and spectator. Ooh, do you remember Michael Jackson's halftime show where there was three Michael Jacksons? It was one of the best halftime shows of all time. He shows up on the Megatrons. He, he comes out of nowhere out of the actually smoke. Actually weirdly then, like sent a chill up my spine because it's actually very similar. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, yeah it's a, but that halftime show was amazing. Wow. Say what you want. That's very yeah. That halftime show was good. He kept trying to blame the man in the mirror, but it was the man in the bedroom. Oh, but the it is it's really scary because in my mind I'm seeing like a psychological like this is like talented Mr. Ripley shit where it's yeah. like oh, he's yeah. gone so far into his world of his own fucking fantasies. He's a bishop. Mm -hmm. He's a leader of an army. He's a multi multi millionaire, and now he's a producer. And just the idea of sitting back and like puffing on something and watching yourself perform as yourself like do weird That's public cool. things it's cool but it feels like a david cronenberg movie yeah yeah i mean it's scary and i, I would be like well shouldn't have done that up there other me <laughs> <laughs> yeah you other. suck hey other me you're really fucking blowing it <laughs> but even though most of his life was fun games and child murder at this point every once in a while Gilles would have to attend to his military duties as Marshal of France, mm. which had sort of lost its luster since he discovered that his real taste for blood could only be satisfied by a younger vintage. Oh, oh Lord. See, when, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta have a Crypt Keeper moment every once in a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> only every once in a while, Marcus, in no way is it constantly your life. <laughs> no, every now and again, I gotta be a little weird. Okay, Marcus. Yeah, you can be a little weird once in a while. <laughs> See, when Gio was asked we by... We had to do with a fucking mandate on the stream without him. And it was Marcus's videos. We just had to live in your brain just for an crawling hour. crawling around in that soup. Oh, yeah, wow. just a woman covered in honey for some reason. <laughs> That's fine, though. What you see it was mine? good. It was, it was amazing. And that was like... You'd, I'd, you're lucky I didn't show the one where she covered herself in Nutella. Honestly, I would have oh, seen it. Oh, that would have yeah. been amazing. See, when Gio was asked by his cousin, Georges de la Trumois to help with a siege mm -hmm. by the Burgundian armies. Uh -oh. Gilles, for the first time, simply told Georges de la Trumois that he didn't have the liquid assets on hand to raise an army. Meanwhile, Usually, Gilles up and at him. Oh, okay. of course, because that was his favorite thing on the face of the planet was to go to war. Not anymore. But now he's got, he's got hot pipes he's organizing. Mm -hmm. He's got a fucking... I mean, you know, not to be anything, grooming kids takes time. He's well, not really grooming anything. Yeah, well, that's not, but he's yeah. also doing other things. Basically, he's happy. Yeah, and I feel is. like that doesn't no, he, make. I mean, ob <laughs> objectively, he is happy, objectively. and that does not make for the best general or warrior. 
You have to be kind of miserable. <laughs> a little bit. That's you have to be someone issue. unsatisfied. He's too satisfied. He's too happy. Yeah. He's got everything. He's got a juggler, issue. an actor, <laughs> a comedian at his whim. Well, finally, like, Georges de la Trumois, he said, fuck it. Like, I'll pay for it. Just send your men. I'll pay your men. Wow. But Gilles, he took the money and he sent his brother René in his place. Because, mm. I mean, this guy did want Gilles because Gilles was a brilliant military commander. But Gilles just went home. Then the Burgundians wiped the floor with his brother René because René was a shitty commander. Huh. He wasn't anywhere near as good as Gilles. So they killed him. He didn't. He wasn't killed. It's oh, just okay. his, they, he, lost. he lost a lot of men. He lost. They bonked yeah. him on the head. And yeah. like, You're yes. a loser. Get out of yes. here. Yeah. They do the thing so in, in Crusader else... Kings three where they the two the two groups go ah, <laughs> and they attack each other and, go, ah, mm-hmm. and the yeah. numbers go slowly down. Man, it's mm-hmm. almost like you were in Vietnam. <laughs> I feel it every day. Wow. Man. But to Gilles de Ray, none of this mattered at all. Weird. See, by this point, military life had become boring, and noble life had become double boring. Okay. All Gilles wanted to do was murder children run his fake church, and of course, produce incredibly lavish theatrical plays whose cost would have dwarfed even the largest of modern Hollywood budgets. Except Just for the, Avatar 2. Yeah, I what? would Actually, I would put it on par with Avatar 2. God, I really people would. People like that movie. It's, I, I haven't like, watched, sure, 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 I haven't sure, watched sure, the sure. Avatar. It's watched definitely a great way to pass time in hospice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that's what I plan on doing, watching all these things when I'm dying. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be great. If he just didn't murder the kids everything else is fine yeah oh I yeah mean, you sure. know the fake church. oh yeah everything else Ru- russell brand right now if he could start <laughs> yes. a church would and it would well, be full of some of the dumbest attractive people that's ever lived it is just going past eccentric because that's the thing they right. had they had like a, they understood for a while like the idea of him opening his house and having a never-ending store of food and entertainment and booze like they're like shields crazy <laughs> he's crazy but then like after a while like when he built this church that they're all like again like just straight up like you know you're ruining for all the rest of us and in- truly institutionally given in pedophiles right like this thing that you're doing is like blowing this up to a, a level that none mm. of us want like this is a really gross and this is for 1400s 14, like the their Catholic version Church of like this is really gross. Yeah, yeah, you got to be pretty gross. Yes, to make them think you're doing something gross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think a part of the Gilles de Ray's innocent Ugh. crowd. I think part of the reason why they want him to be innocent because if he's not a child murderer, then he's a great. He's a fantastic historical character. Oh, he's, he's like, hilarious. Like he's a hilarious eccentric. He's like he's Joan of Arc's like fun best friend. Like oh, Joan, let's go party. I mean, is yeah. anyone is anyone getting like a divorce over this? Like, do people be like, no, I'm a Gilles head. I, I, and like, I mean, there are people like ending there relationships. Are, there are Absolutely. people who that gives have, a fuck. No, it's, well, there are people that have dedicated their entire lives to this very subject. And yeah. then they wake up one day and they realize they're 90 years old. And what have they done? with their <laughs> <life>? <laughs> Absolutely not. You don't know. Uh, I, don't. I, I personally, I have respect for those people, but we'll get to that later on. I have respect for someone I do too. who I devotes love their life to, his, to, to history and knowledge. I have literally, yes, but not you know what just I love? this. Because you know what I love? When I love it, well, the reason why we get into our historical topics, you know what I love? I said it's all about perspectives. It is. No, it's because you it's can say more different... offensive things because it happened 500 years ago. That's a bonus. <laughs> That's a picker. Live from your grave. Now, Gilles' medium of theatrical expression was the mystery play. Mystery, oh, but it's not. What, good, it's not what no, you think. It's not, it's not, ah, no, it's not fun. Mystery, no. Mystery plays. Who did it? Uh, no, no. Oh, it, you know what I like to do is be like, "You did it!" Like right when it starts. Right like, when it you starts. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I ruin it for everybody. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh. No, back then the word mystery and miracle were more or less interchangeable. Oh, so makes these sense, were I guess. stories taken from the Bible. They okay. were stories taken from. They were also taken from secular history, just so long as that history involved a miracle from God. Yeah, because that was like the zhuzh. That's yeah. what you get. That's what butts and seats. I yeah. mean, it's a lot of great stories. So yeah, mm-hmm. work well on the stage, I suppose. Yeah, well, grandiose spectacles with enormous stages full of color and great movement. Mystery plays had scripts that reached beyond five hundred pages. 
and they often took a week to perform. Ooh. These were the summer blockbusters of the 15th century. That's Specifically, cool. these were like the Avengers movies. They're like three and a half hours long and well, pretty cool. And people and would like arrive for and days. And everyone comes. And they, would, and they would play for days. Specifically, it's like WrestleMania that I'm going to this weekend. Ooh, mm. cool. Saturday and Sunday. That's wow. awesome. That's a whole event. And on tonight, there's a, it's Friday, there's an event, but I'm not going to go. Yeah. yeah, if we want to, <laughs> if we want to be classy about it, it's sort of like uh, Wagner's classy. Wagner's Ring Cycle, this is which Wrestle- takes oh, like three days. WrestleMania, you know? it's the performance in front of the gods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was you don't think WrestleMania is classy. <laughs> No. Let's just you don't on. think Let's WrestleMania is classy. This is classy. the man. He would Muhammad classy. Ali performed at WrestleMania. Performed? Cindy Lauper. Yeah, he shook. Uh-huh. Which is a performance. <laughs> Cindy Lauper. Uh-huh. Was at a WrestleMania. She performed at WrestleMania. Uh-huh. I remember Lou Albano was there. He yeah. was also at one. Yeah. I remember Undertaker. Was, well, Mike let me, Tyson. Let me ask you this. Uh, was Val Venus at her, ever at a WrestleMania? Did Val he ever Venus do is his... now paralyzed. Okay. <laughs> Can you please <laughs> was uh, was the Godfather? Did he uh, did was Pimpinate easy? Is, was that were the were the words Pimpinate easy through, said at a WrestleMania? Oh my God! I didn't know I was dealing with such a fucking elitist. <laughs> yeah, he's only got a wow. few precious ble- breaths oh left. Oh my God! Like, What's that new we, Hillary Rodham Clinton tattoo you have? <laughs> yes, yeah. I was going to say when he came in with his pussy hat on, no. I was like, hey, that's yeah. fine. I mean, like, he can fine. be like that. It's he's fine. got Maddow head tattooed up on his lower back. <laughs> I do, I did, and I got it all done this week. Yes. I've changed. This is what's changed. Great. WrestleMania is a classic event for the record. <laughs> Anything ending in mania, mania? is always oh an All extremely right, let's classic. Move on. Well, at the time, the most famous mystery plays had been the mystery of Adam about the creation of the universe and the mystery of the passion, which is, of course, about Jesus' crucifixion. Hey, those the, are the big the ones. Passions, those, those big things. Yes, Man, the Stations of the Cross, if you want a, just a good cerebral horror movie, just the Stations of the Cross Man, is the best. Passion mm-hmm. of the Christ. Passion it's of the Christ. Fantastic horror movie. I mean, these mystery plays, Mystery of Adam, Mystery of the Passion, it's like Jaws and Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. But Gilles' grand theatrical production, of which he oversaw every aspect from the costumes to the sets, was Le Mystère du Siège d'Orléans. Perfect. The Mr. Who Shits. <laughs> Mr. Who Shits. <laughs> no. It's that man right over there. Yeah. I did it. It's the, it translates the mystery of the Siege of Orléans. Now, oh, he, okay. he wrote a whole play about him and Joan and of Arc taking Orlean. But if you look into, I found a really cool doctor thesis on the origins of the mystery of the Sash of Ayodhya, right? Mm-hmm. And what they say is very, very interesting is that they're like, well, of all the other mysteries, there's been a lot of, there's documentation about who wrote it because they're so huge. And they also get added yeah. to over like a hundred years. Yeah. And this is when this, when he was producing this play, this is during a time period when Joan of Arc was, as we said before, they were trying to be like, shh, 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 let's not. Yeah, yeah she sucks. Yeah, she was yeah. a witch. We burned her. Well, well she's more like. Well, not necessarily. Th- this was the side that was pro Joan of Arc, okay. but they just wanted her to go away. They just didn't want it. Like, cool why would we make it such a cool big off. deal gotcha. over this? I mean, we got a king. We don't need a, a child prophet in the mix here. Yeah, well, it's, right. it's it's with us, right? Focus on the king. Don't focus on Joan of Arc. The king, he's the one with he's, divine he's doing connections. It. Yeah, yeah, he's doing it. And so, what about her laptop? <laughs> I, we do need to look yeah, at folks, Joan of Arc's laptop. Joan of Arc's laptop. <laughs> what about her laptop from hell, folks? That is really that's the truth. We're not hearing. Yeah, um, but he, uh, so he was putting this out there during a time period where everyone's been like, okay, this is weird, right? But they were like looking into the origins of where this play came from. They have a really hard time. They're like, well, we we have like one version of it, but the one thing that really stood out was that Gilles de Ray was kind of cut out yeah. of, of any sort. There's receipts that show that he paid for shit. Yeah. But it, but all of these people at the time kind of like struck his name from the record. They were all just like, he was just some reason not really included in this time period, especially because they know that in the 10 years after the Battle of Orléans, that started to become a little like a, a semi-unofficial holiday yeah. that people would kind of do. And this play started showing up and, and Gilles de Ray attached to it. And it was just this weird mm. thing where everyone kind of like pushed him on the rock. He got Kevin Spacey is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Is that, yeah. that, that This is my theory is that they it's all like the knew season five of House of Cards. Yes. They well, knew that, he that was so was gross. A one. That but, was weird. But the idea is that they knew that he was so gross that they were already trying to erase him from history at the time period. Yeah. Because mm. they would like they didn't want him involved because it get it was also this like weird touchy thing because the mystery of the Sage of Orleans didn't become official until after she was exonerated mm-hmm. in like in the fourteen fifties. 
Well, this play, it naturally featured Joan of Arc in the lead, but playing the supporting role was a highly fictionalized version of Gilles de Ray, who appeared as a faithful and devoted servant to Joan of Arc and her godly motivations. Oh. Now, since mystery plays were so incredibly expensive by their very nature, the investment costs were usually covered by city governments, clergy, or wealthy private citizens like Gilles de Ray. Yeah. That is the upfront cost. That's the mm-hmm. investment. That, that's your foreign investors. And like today's productions, these costs were usually offset by the price of admission. It's more about breaking even oh, than yeah. it is about turning profits. Because it's about theater. You're, yes, mm-hmm. it is about theater's sake, and it's about you, and mm-hmm. it's promoting your name. Yeah. Admission, however, was charged on a sliding scale. For the poor, it cost one franc to be a groundling. Ooh. Not bad. I got a couple of francs in my closet right now. Pull them out. Have them tell you a couple of jokes. They'll walk right in. Are those your dead sex slave zombies? Like you're, your Chef Dahmer? You've got no, Frank Caliendo in your closet? Oh, my God. Whoa. No, I'm John Madden. Whoa, he's <laughs> everybody. Uh, I'm Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that good? <laughs> that no, is good. I was thinking Frank from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, that's fun. Oh, sure, Isn't that's fun. fun. Yeah, yeah, that's much more fun Isn't than Frank fun? Caliendo. Yeah, Frank Caliendo. I'm John Madden. <laughs> <laughs> he's very talented. He is. He is. But with Gilles de Ray, who seemed intent on showing off in every aspect in the production of his own mystery play, he paid for everything and charged nothing oh. for admission. In addition, he gave everyone access to a full buffet of <gasps> venison, succulent fish, yes. mead, and mm. wine for every single performance for five months. And everyone's just like, okay, cool, yeah. free yeah. meals, you got to do this. Mm-hmm. And, and then he and Gilles de Ray said to me, like, no, it's just about performance mm-hmm. it's about it's what it's kind of about what we're trying to do it's about community it's about community it is you know it is I mean? movies or community that i come around i feel like it was a better time to be poor back then you know you got all this free food <laughs> no, 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 no 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 maybe no. it was a better week to be poor yeah there you go that <laughs> one day might have been nice <laughs> that's kind of fun it's still all hot, old, succulent fish. Yeah. Well, like, it's yeah, still hanging out outside. Oh, yeah. but venison. I mean, that's a real good cut. That's a good meat. Yeah. That's a good meat, yeah. Yeah. No, if, no. You hit a, if you hit a deer in Wisconsin, you can you can eat it. Yeah. You can. That's but unless nice. you pop its fucking shit bag inside of it, no, then you, you have contaminate to whole, all the meat. Yeah, you have to go. Oh, well, that's true. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, in order to raise the cash to pay for all this, Gilles maxed out his credit using his land, castles, art, furniture, and books as collateral. Hmm. Gilles also paid two to three times the actual price for everything he bought, although it's not clear if he paid high prices as a show of wealth, through impatience, or because he just had no idea how much anything cost. Yeah, hmm. I think it was, uh, was it the mom uh, what, from Arrested what's Development? What's a banana cost? Yeah. $10? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, as far as the actual cost of production went, Gilles paid 140 actors with speaking parts, while five to 600 people were paid as extras. Every single Damn, performance. That's Steak. a lot of people. How big was the stage? Huge. It's massive. It's huge. Because they said they had to build it regularly to like look like they would make it, you know, in the in the mystery of the passion. You'd have like mm. Christ there and they'd put all the angels mm-hmm. and all the people. And you have a guy playing God and you got like, you know, a bunch of people sucking on his feet, washing right. his feet for oh, some reason. They're all obsessed feet. with washing his feet. It's metaphorical, and, I think. Yeah. Well, it was big enough where they were actually able to show the convincingly show movement of armies. That's yeah, cool. That's from like awesome. one it's scene awesome. to another. Yeah. yeah, I would love to have seen one of these. Like, it wow. sounds incredible. It's kind of like what they do at the opera. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, every single person, every single actor had to be dressed in the most authentic costumes possible, and everything had to be made from the finest cloth, even if the costume was torn into rags yes. to represent someone who was a, to represent a peasant. He would do like what Balenciaga does. Balenciaga? Where you take like a thing, you look like a homeless person, but mm. the whole outfit costs like 15 grand. Yeah. They're controversial. They Balenciaga. Yeah. And honestly, why? Balenciaga. It's, it's actually why it's appropriate. Because Gilles de Ray is the Balenciaga of this entire story. All right. Well, perhaps what was most incredible about these costumes was the fact that Gilles made a rule where every actor only wore their costume once. Whoa, then what happened to it? They would throw it away and make a new one for <laughs> every single performance. Seven, That's wasted a lot of money. 700 new costumes for every single performance. Wow. Now, after months of preparation, Gilles made his debut on May 8th, 1435, just four years after the death of Joan of Arc, when her rise as a hero of the French and her fall as a supposed heretic was still a fresh memory. In fact, 
One could say that Gilles de Rey was the first person that recognized Joan of Arc as a martyr. Oh, he definitely put it on the map. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did he know in the NFL, NFL players have to buy their jerseys? Really? Isn't that crazy? Huh. What do you mean? But they also, get... the president, you know, if he goes to the kitchen or she <laughs> goes to the kitchen, uh, they got to pay for it. What? They have to pay for the sandwiches. What are you even talking about? Like they have to I'm, pay for the sandwiches. What are you? This. What? I'm talking about how this crazy this. I'm talking about how he he was the 700 wardrobe changes that they had every single show. Yeah, of course yeah. he had to pay for it. I'm it was just his saying, production. He was, the, yeah, the he NFL was the doesn't producer. even do that. But, and if you're if you're the leader of the free world, you also have to pay for your sandwiches. Yeah, you got to pay for everything on some aspect. <laughs> yeah, in the kitchen. Where did you hear that this president has to pay for sandwiches? That's a fact. <laughs> that was from the White House chef. <laughs> you're talking about the only man who ever did that was probably Jimmy Carter. No, that was the <laughs> White House chef who worked for Bill Clinton. I'm just a simple peanut farm. That's Bob Dylan. That's, that's, that's even close to Jimmy Carter. It's, 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 it's more Randy Newman. It's, 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 it's not a president. Busy Jimmy Carter. Now, hey, you're hey, about hey. to do Welcome Back, Cop. Don't worry. You're... I put an IOU in the jar. <laughs> it's just nice that they're giving me. Oh, my God. Well, the reviews for the Siege of Orlean, mm -hmm. fantastic. All right. Oh, yeah, man. It was, it was a, a big hit. play. It was an absolute hit. As far as the story went, Joan of Arc was portrayed as a saint of the highest order, while Gilles was portrayed in a fully glamorized version of himself as her faithful servant, because that's how he wanted the public to see him. It is interesting. He made himself kind of the second fiddle. Well, he was only one little character in one chunk of that's it because it was because he wanted to watch himself. Yeah, and he, yeah, but he, he didn't make sit. himself the most grandiose. But, but he would be sitting on like an elevated chair amongst the audience, like watching his own play, just well, going like, ha, 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 ha. Well, but that's <laughs> like how we watch <laughs> old YouTube clips on ourselves on our television and go, "You're the best comedian I've ever ever seen." <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't. We have different nights. Well, for him, it wasn't about being glorified on stage. For him, it was about showing the decadence that he could put on right. this play. In fact, it was a bit more of a plus for him. Him to not be portrayed as one of the main characters mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, look at this. I can put on this entire play. It is not about me. It's about Jean. I just, want, I just want to make sure that everybody sees what jo how good Jean is. No, I think there's something to that because Harvey Weinstein, I just want people to know that it's just Gwyneth Paltrow. He's got the nice. I don't. She's just got a nice couple. Right? I don't think that and is we what gotta he, that's slam not him up there. We got the like. sensitive guy with his little mustache, and he goes oh, Romeo and Juliet. But then she's got the badungas coming up. Now that's the movie, I right don't, there. It's that's really so not. Fucking movie. That's ruining the. That's ruining the movie. It was more <laughs> like when we watched Page Seven and Wizbrew perform in Brooklyn, and we didn't have to do anything, and we ate all the cheese in the green room. Yeah, that's how we're like Gilles de Ray. Great. <laughs> there you go, because we're like this is even better than performing. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to, but we did have to pay for the food that we ate. Yeah. Because that's what do. a writer is. We yeah. always See, do. that makes sense. It took me. It all makes sense. It took me years to make the two of you understand that that shit no. that we get in the writer, we have to pay it for that. It took one year. It's Marcus, <laughs> we knew that. I don't think you did. I At first I didn't, but then I immediately knew. <laughs> I knew it. Well, let's hear an example of some lines oh. that Jill's character said in the play. Okay. This is him pledging his service to Joan. Lady... I have no, no doubt of me. No, 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 don't. What it's not this? Ray Liotta. Yeah, no, what are these it's Harvey today? Weinstein. No, it no, is not. Do Harvey, Harvey Weinstein. No. I don't want to be Harvey Weinstein. Give it more. Yeah, I don't want to do a Harvey uh, Weinstein. Give it more of a ro Give it a, a French romantic. Give it a lady. Why if, are you going if you Italian? Want, <laughs> 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 if you want, lady. Oh my. Just oh, yeah, let yeah, me do whatever you want. If you must do a horrible man, then do Gerard Depardieu. Oh, lady. Lady, I have no doubt of me. I wish but to do your will. My friends and underlings, no way. <laughs> Just do it the way you were doing I it. Shall I shall come <laughs> and we shall do your will in everything. Okay. Oh, I've got to be. <laughs> yeah. I've I've got to be. I, in a lap. <laughs> wow. Well, later on in the play, <laughs> when the other commanders are questioning the wisdom of Joan's tactics, mm. Gilles is shown as her greatest defender, oh. basically showing everyone that if it weren't for Gilles, there would be no Joan, which oh. is actually true. We should refuse her nothing and have no doubt of victory since she is at the head. Yes. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, great, Gilles. Great stuff, Gilles. <laughs> and so with this scintillating dialogue, Le Mystère du Siège d'Orléans ran daily for five 
months Ooh. every oh, day wow. for five months. Like Billy Joel at MSG. Dude, yeah. that's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Glorifying both Joan and Jill while conveniently leaving out that Jill stayed silent and did nothing during the six months of the trial that was sure to lead to Joan's execution. I probably actually helped her get caught. Yep. Yeah. But while Gilles was producing Le Mystère des Sièges de Orléans, I get better every time I say it. You do. And during its entire five month run, it's important to remember that he was also still luring children into castles and murdering them slowly and horrifically. That never stopped. In other words, yep. Gilles de Ray's place in the French theatrical world is exactly what QAnon followers believe modern Hollywood to be a cesspool of pedophilic child murderers ultimately run by the so called elite. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, that's I the thought. thing. It's like the seed, <laughs> but then they grow into a dumb tree. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah it's, it's a dumb, dumb tree, tree that yes, grows no, out just, of like yes, one seed. We do know that there are yeah. pedophiles in Hollywood. We absolutely know that. We know that there are sexual predators in Hollywood. We yeah. absolutely know that. Oh, but yeah. ritualistic child murder by on the part of Tom Hanks and Oprah might be a bridge too far. Just because their schedules um, are so packed. Yeah. It's so hard to get them together, <laughs> together. in one place. Yeah. You actually get Oprah, Tom Hanks, and Bill Clinton in one room. Yeah. That's a fucking, wow. that takes six months to yeah, orchestrate. I think they're all the same person. Yeah. <laughs> but while the similarities are interesting, Gio was more of a QAnon unto himself. But there was also never any supposed hero working behind the scenes to bring him to justice. No, as a matter of fact, no, everybody there was, there was no storm coming. No, mm. and everybody that was around him was somebody who he slowly but surely either positioned to be close to him because they were cool with it, mm -hmm. or they owed him a bunch of money. Yeah. Like he and they yeah. were just kind of or just straight up evil. Yeah, or they had a or they had a stake in Gilles de Ray staying in power. Yes. I mean, in reality, nobody around Gilles de Ray gave a fuck about anything he was doing just so long as it didn't mess with anyone else's power and privilege. And really, there wasn't much of a point to Gilles de Ray's excesses, decadent and depraved, just for the point of being decadent and depraved. Mm. Besides, Gilles never worried about the expenditures during the production of his mystery play because he believed that all of his money troubles would soon be solved by black magic and alchemy. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Honestly, he's not wrong. I mean, okay. I mean, it but, turned out to be. Uh, yeah. Now, Gilles de Ray's dabblings in the magical world actually began north of the satanic realm. Jersey. Ooh. Oh, very <laughs> nice. When it came to mysticism, Gilles was introduced to magic by Joan of Arc, who had seemingly used divine powers to defeat the English even if those same powers didn't translate to battles against the Burgundians. Hey, man, even we know God ain't at 100%. Yeah. No, and not the, the Burgundians are always going to be in God's favor. Well, that's also, though, that's part of the magic of it, is that it was said that just so long as Joan paid fealty to God and listened to the voices, then she was all, always, she always won. She oh. always had somebody to save her. But the moment she started going off on her own and not listening to the voices, then that's when she was captured and killed. Because oh. that was a problem. You're looking at all these voices, and the only thing I want to say to you is, like, hey, Jean, show me the titties. Oh, and you're like, right. hey, I got a job. Here. Got you got a job, a job to do, yeah. Joan. But while Gio was seemingly seeing God's intervention in the real world, which showed him that the supernatural was indeed real, hmm. he encountered a knight in possession of a grimoire. Wow. Now, the book certainly contained information about summoning demons, but to Gilles, the most important entries had to do with the practice of alchemy. Now, remember, this is fucking real practical for Gilles. Oh, this is all. Sure. Magic is a practical thing. It's for very. These people. It reminds it's gonna work me. Out great. Like, it's interesting because it's like he's. I was trying to fill. I was trying to figure out the proper like connection to modern times. Yeah, I couldn't quite figure it out either. It's like it, it's it's something that like. It's frowned upon. Uh, it's, I don't know, like short selling stock. It's something oh, like it's that. Oh, like, well, it's uh, like people when, who do the crossing over stuff. Or it's, it's that. It's also people that like, you know, political candidates that like obviously are probably child molesters that also like join the evangelical groups to kind of like get their Could support. Be. It's it, There's something about like him joining forces with a free, straight up con people that yeah. he's like, that will, like, mm, it's, it's another part of his like mania. Yeah. Well, let's get briefly into alchemy. Well, for those of you who don't know, alchemy was a sort of Middle Ages frontrunner of chemistry that also combined occultism, philosophy, magic, and astrology. It's a lifestyle, baby. Yeah. 
Now, alchemy certainly had other uses, but its most famous application was the transmuting of baser substances like lead into mm. pure gold. And also, nice. uh, there is a constant debate about whether or not that was about the, is that an allegorical yeah. meaning? Allegorical. Or allegorical. Yeah. Allegorical. But then a lot of them say, well, the thing is, yes, it's allegorical, but Only also- Only because it didn't fucking work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they yeah. tried. Yes. No, I mean, that's yeah. right. No, that was allegorical. No, it was it all about symbolism. Yeah, it's right. It's, yeah, I yeah, know I, I drink too much to have sex with you, but it's all just about the fact that it's about symbolism. Dude, our Catholic priest, Father Steve, used to talk all all the time about how he saw the bread turn into body and flesh. I oh, swear, of but I don't think that's true. No, I think it's they, not. I think they bought a ribeye and threw it <laughs> yeah. in the, the crackers. We, we just covered the fucking story of the woman who lost the toes who got oh. shot by her husband and then they made the toes <laughs> yeah. grow back and then they're not no showing evidence. us the goddamn toes. Wow. Show us the toes.com. Like, this would be huge. Show us the fucking toes. Show us the toes. Live from your grave. Now, medieval alchemists failed again and again yeah. in their attempt at such a miracle. Because, I mean, even if it was an allegory for some, it definitely wasn't an allegory for Gilles de Ray. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But instead of concluding that such a thing was impossible, alchemists decided that they must be missing some unknown ingredient. Oh, yeah. God damn it, Barry. Did you piss in it? Yeah. Mm. Did you spit in it? Yeah. Did Every you day. fuck a virgin last mm. night? No. But mm. honestly. Let's redo the whole thing. All those things <laughs> I was doing anyway. <laughs> and they ended up referring to this secret sauce as the Philosopher's Stone. Then, seemingly for the hell of it, they also decided that the Philosopher's Stone could be used to make a tea or wine that produced an elixir of immortality, which Sweet. is where alchemist Nicolas Flamel enters the picture. Now, supposedly, Nicolas Flamel, who was a real guy, he oh, yeah. actually existed, Okay, he had discovered the Philosopher's Stone. And while for us, Flamel is a centuries-old figure, for Gilles de Ray... Nicholas Flamel died when Gilles was 14 years old. Yeah, he was right there. Yeah. He invented mm. alchemy during his lifetime. Yeah. Therefore, Flamel and the Philosopher's Stone were within living memory. And Flamel had been French to boot, local guy. Nicholas had made his wealth speculating in real estate, which gave him the appearance of bottomless pockets. Man, that has been around since oh, time, yeah. since buildings yeah. can yep. be sold. Since is land. The idea of being like, hey, I'm not really liquid right now. Yes, indeed. Real estate. A tale as old as time. Yes. And since Flamel also dabbled in alchemy, a rumor started that he had found the Philosopher's Stone. That's why oh. he had bottomless pockets. Wow. This, this is like when you see someone just being like, why do they always on a boat on Instagram? Like, <laughs> right. why are you always on a boat? Why are you always, like, at Photoshop. the time, you're sometimes like. Sometimes they Photoshop yeah, sometimes themselves. Sometimes they Photoshop. And sometimes they're yachting. Oh, oh. no. I know. Well, this is highly interesting to Gilles de Ray because he wanted to live life the way he'd been living it in every aspect. Hmm. So he needed Nicholas Flamel's magic rock that created gold. Of course he did. You've now built a probably, you know, a hundred million dollar church to molest people in. Then you've For also theater. put on a play. <laughs> what about the theater? Yes, he put on a play, which is technically very positive. That's yes. very positive. He put on the play hundreds of millions of dollars. wins this? You were hemorrhaging money. And you are an unrepentant, child-molesting psychopath that's also not good at work. Yeah. And so you're sitting there being like, ooh, this is not going to continue. You like, you literally, you must have a magical rock. Yeah. And, right. and I know that the Philosopher's Stone is not necessarily a magical rock. Mm. It's a word for a substance. It's a whole thing. Or it's an allegory, but for our purposes, it's a fucking magic rock. It might okay. as well be. Yeah. See, the thing about Gilles de Ray that's often misunderstood when people call him a satanic pedophile child killer is that the satanic part is somewhat of an exaggeration. Hey, let's, not, hey, let's, let's leave the Satanist alone. I mean, it definitely mm. makes him sound more ghoulish and interesting. Yeah, it's awesome. But it's not his main gig. Sure. Put another way, he did not get into black magic and Satan because it was evil and rad like other occult murder torture killers like Richard Ramirez and Bob Berdella. Instead, Gilles de Ray got into the game for... Money. That's it. Yeah. That's the only reason why it's for There's money. There's so much money in it. Yeah. Well, he did not. I mean. Well, he was just like, well, I've tried being an army for hire, but then I have to travel. That's and a then lot of I, work. I try to do all of this, but I just spend money. I'm not stop making any money. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Yeah. Start charging money for the for the theater, the nah, tickets. Yeah, but then everyone won't want to. Everyone won't think I'm the greatest guy in the world. Yeah, because yeah. that's yeah. what. Because remember how Bernie Rainoff said. That was his his ultimate his ultimate flaw was that he just wanted to be a good guy to everybody. Yeah, he did. and he just he didn't did. know. And if they, they wanted me to be the go to guy, so I needed to be the go to guy for them. He cared too much. He cared too Absolutely. much. He worked too hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
See, what Gilles needed more than anything was cash to spend so he could maintain his fantasy of unlimited privilege, the whole thing of him trying to recreate his childhood. So he pawned properties, he pawned castles. Sometimes he sold entire towns at fire sale prices in order to get cash as fast as possible to buy more stuff and to pay for more theatrical productions. That'd be a fun Pawn Stars episode. A town? Yeah. Oh, gonna, yeah. I'm going to need to call in my expert, and it's Barbara Corcoran. <laughs> yeah, Barbara Corcoran. <laughs> From yeah. Shark Tank. She's horny. She's so fuck you right now, dude. She is, <laughs> want, she is so horny. I just want to be left alone by him. Well, he's in real estate. <laughs> but speaking of Gilles' productions, it seems as if he already understood some pretty heavy magical principles even while he was producing Les Mystères du Siège de Arlene. Hmm. Or at least he was trying to figure out some magical principles. See, it's been theorized that Gilles was attempting to magically invoke the spirit of Joan of Arc through the mystery play. Don't oh. know why. It's just been... Uh, speculated. Well, because what do we know about tulpas? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That is mm. the thing that is the very old concept of kind of creating, but also it's just the maybe kind of a hope. I mean, he might just miss his friend and he might, you know, because that's the thing. Those were his best time. Those were his best years. They really were his best years. During his time with Joan, where that was the peak of his life. And you know, a lot of serial killers too, they also say like, oh, I need someone to stop me. Why won't somebody stop me? And I think right. maybe he thinks if Joan of Arc comes back, then he he will stop. Oh, and yeah. He'll be, and he'll be a better person. He won't fucking murder children anymore. Okay. Well, it's been theorized that he, of course, was trying to invoke the spirit of Joan of Arc. And through his studies, he'd learned that a requirement for magic was that every material used in a magical ritual had to be, quote unquote, virgin. All never these, used before. But what these oh. people did not know, if this is true, that they were all part of some super ritual, like some big old thing, is that that's Technically, also against magical ritual principles, as it is. You're gonna so go. Like, do, you're technically Geo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna go do that with Geo. <laughs> That's Jill what Durant? he needed. That's what he needed. You're gonna, somebody you're like gonna me. pull technical. You're gonna pull a Reddit card. It uh, didn't work, did it? I'm gonna pull a technical card. Well, technically, this is 15th century magic. You're talking more 18th century magic, 19th century magic. You're talking uh, Order of the Golden Dawn magic. But this hermetic teachings came from somewhere, didn't they? <laughs> you know, guys. <laughs> We'll discuss it later <laughs> over a drink. Well, this is why Gilles insisted that the costumes be made anew for every performance. Uh, because to use any object secondhand or to use anything that had been used in non-magical endeavors was to court failure, if not outright disaster. Uh, but Gilles, he didn't care about spending insane amounts of money because by the time his spending habits had reached their heights, he'd already come to believe that he was just a hair away from discovering the secret to unlimited wealth through alchemy and black magic. You know what? You know what this is, man? This is Jeffrey Epstein dumping his money into Harvard scientists trying to live forever. <laughs> like trying to isolate really his is. cock and to move into space. Yeah. Like it's that shit. Yeah. And this, by the way, this is old magic. This is grimoire magic. This is Merlin magic. Yes. This is not Aleister Crowley and his fucking Ponzi friends having imaginary spell spats in overpriced London flats. Yeah. So these guys. Less, less butt plugs, maybe. <laughs> oh, these guys thought they had God on tap. Yeah. This is like and the uh, devil on tap, more importantly. Yeah. Ooh, on draft. Not bad. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and that's the thing is that they these grimoires that were being written, like this is a grimoire that was written like last week. You yeah. know, these were transcribed Fresh. grimoires. This is before the printing press. So right. only the most wealthy could afford and these. So tomes. you would you would say then maybe admit that writing uh those grimoires might be more difficult than dictating them then. Uh yeah, writing them. Don't coming to fall up. into his little fucking <laughs> trap. The person who writes it's the person who thinks of it. Yeah, the, the person, person who that of it. just fucking writes it is basically a typewriter. There is a word for that. It's called a scribe. Yes. <laughs> and indeed, a scribe without a scribe, who gives a fuck what you're saying? Because they That's have to write you. it all down. That's you. That is your entire life. What? Is just talking yeah, and no one writing do. it down. That's what you and I do. Yeah. That's no, your... People write down my words in their mind. <laughs> So you're saying they're doing the hard work of writing down the words of their mind that you're while well, you're just yeah. They hear my words like uh, Frodo saw the ring. Uh-huh. They memorize. They put it in their brains you because lost, of the way I've learned how to speak. Right, you've <laughs> lost your. This is this is it. Oh, that's not, this is over. Uh, no, anyway, uh, it is difficult to write. Yeah, it, <laughs> you know. I know. You know. I know. Now, sometime around 1436, Gilles was told of a goldsmith who claimed to know the secrets of alchemy. So Gilles found the man, gave him a single silver piece, and told him to transmute it to gold. Mm. Instead, the goldsmith took the piece, locked himself in a room, got drunk, passed out, (laughs) woke up, 
and absconded with the silver. Technically, that's just the, the you got. That's a consultation. It is. <laughs> it's hilarious. I just like that that happen. That'll happen now. Well, yeah, I just love. I that, love this again. It's all like with the same brains. Mm -hmm. They have the same brains that we have. Yep. So yeah. yeah, it's just surrounded Sweet. by con men. Oh yeah, and this was only the first <laughs> of many, many men to hoodwink Gilles de Ray under the guise of teaching him one sort of magic or another. But even though his first foray was a bust, Gilles was tantalized by the possibility of transmutation. So he got two of his priests at the Chapel of Holy Innocence, who usually phoned him boys. They said, put that on hold. Okay. I got other people to get me boys. Uh -huh. I want you guys on finding me magicians. Yeah, you know what that meant? That's a decision that came from a fresh ejaculate. <laughs> because Maybe. that's a clear-headed it's a clear-headed clear -headed decision yeah i guess so well the first priest was eustace blanchet and the second was father andre boucher mm, bobby would, boucher yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah he'd recently brought gilles a nine-year-old boy to rape and murder in exchange for a really nice horse oh, big God. pants that's the big pants <laughs> yeah, that that's time that. all right and so through blanchet boucher and gilles cousin gilles de cia de ray because <laughs> got a lot of French, <laughs> a, lot a lot of French, French. <laughs> a lot of French, and it all rhymes. He began interviewing potential magicians. Oh my God, that like would have been fun. Terrible lobby. Yeah. Yes, indeed. One known only as Trompette later claimed that he had instructed Gilles on how to sign a pact with the devil using his own blood. First thing you do is yep. you gotta pop open the skin, right? Then you just sign your John Hancock right on this slip of paper. John Hancock's not gonna be around for another symbol. No, he's not. <laughs> and it's Herbie Hancock. Funny old bit. <laughs> yes, indeed. So these guys are just killing a bunch of rabbits in front of them and doing a bunch of tricks with doves and carts and they, stuff. They probably got some of that fun powder that you throw into a fire. <sighs> and it, you know, yeah, are you did. afraid of the dark? Yeah. Yes. But Gilles, he later insisted during his trial that he never sold his soul to the devil uh, for power or for riches. I mean, that's really not even... Why are we talking about that? Because there's so many other things. Like, there's tangible things that he did that were really wrong. It's interesting because it's how they frame it. It's how they frame what he did. Meanwhile, he's just straight up being like, no, 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 no. We never fucking conjured up the devil. Do you have an idea how difficult it is to get him on the phone? Mm -hmm. I have to. We got to talk to his other. We got to talk to other people. Wasting time here. Yeah. Let's yeah. just get to the the charges, shall we? Yeah, we'll talk. We'll definitely talk about that later. But yeah, his whole thing was that from his perspective, God was definitely real. He didn't want to go to hell. He did fear for his immortal soul, so he figured Oof. that he'd do the same thing his grandfather Jean de Crayon did. Is that at the end of my life, I'll just say, "Give me a mulligan." A mulligan. Fucking forgive me, God. It's built in. I've, I've, I repent. Forgive me, God. And he'll go straight to heaven. And then in a few hundred years, he'll welcome Adolf Hitler and say, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, honestly, they're all hanging out right now. Yeah, they're oh, all hanging out right now. Isn't that fun to yeah. think about? Well, as far as the no magic rule went, Jill figured that he could find a back door to the powers of sorcery and alchemy without selling his soul. Like a common he's trying to He's trying to cheat this. The whole thing is a cheat. He's no, trying to do a life no, no, cheat. No, no. He's it's trying to hack about, the life cheat. Yeah. It's all, it you, comes down to it, it's about negotiations. You want to get in there? <laughs> I still don't know this impression. Is up. It's Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> I don't it's even not, think it sounds like I, it. I Look at him. Watch his interview. I see the <laughs> ugly man that he is. I went. I made sure this morning I boiled two hard-boiled eggs to know what his dick looked like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's incredible how many men in this city look like him. Hey, it's called the producer's body. It really is like every time I drive out to my doctor, I have to drive through Beverly Hills. And oh, yeah. I always see a yeah. weird fat man in his front yard talking to somebody. It always looks like Harvey Weinstein. Let's, you it's know what, becoming guys? me. I'm going to eventually turn into that, but be a good one. <laughs> but that's the problem is when I drive with my top down in the car, it's never women that check it out. It's only it's always some other fat man. There's just like. Nice. With a beard. Uh, well, yes. sometimes it's just five o'clock. All right. Let's not expound on it too much further. <laughs> <laughs> but with each magician Gio met, the interview usually came with some sort of demonstration of power or the appearance of power. And while most of these magicians were allegedly and technically successful in showing, and they made show. They did cool. make a little bit of show. That's magic. Yeah, they also weren't what Gio wanted. No. One magician who came to Thifoge attempted an invocation that scared Gilles so much that he locked himself in a room, <laughs> sat himself down in a magical circle of protection, and refused to leave. This is like... <laughs> it's like when I took acid at Tina's bachelor party. <laughs> yeah. It's very similar. Oh, man, it was scary. Something was going on. I don't know if it's a Madame Blavatsky style, like they had helpers, like mm -hmm. people coming in and out, but Gilles de Ray was extremely superstitious. Yes. And yeah. the, the, as he went through these processes of finding these magicians, like... Each one of them scared the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. And he, so weird. Because 
I, I, this is, I, there's a tension. There's a tension of him understanding that I, I am going to have to go all the way to the top to become innocent at yeah. the end of my life. Yeah. All right. With another magician, Gilles de Cie, Gilles de Ray's cousin, he was so scared that he jumped out of a window. <laughs> <laughs> later, these are good Mike, shows. Yeah. Like Mike Birbiglia. Yeah. Later, it was also said that whatever that magician had summoned, it beat him severely and wounded his face for bothering him. Oh, my. I think it was just some guy. Yeah, yeah it really could have been. But that was the least of the unfortunate incidents to befall some of the magicians that came into Gilles' employ. One, he drowned before he even got to the castle. He drowned on the <sighs> way to the Gilles castle. As in drowned him or no, he, just he, just, he just happened to drown? he just happened to drown. Yeah, man, they it's hard. a different there. time. Yeah, yeah rivers are yeah. different. Then. Yeah. yeah. Another one died immediately and almost cartoonishly as soon as he walked into the castle. It's one of those things where, like, they opened the door and he just fucking... <laughs> 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 and then meanwhile, it's Gilles Ray was one. like, there's no way this is symbolic. Yeah. Yeah, wow. The closest it seems that any of these early magicians came to summoning something was when a man named Jean de la Riviere was instructed to summon the devil, presumably as a test. Camera mm. test. Yeah. And supposedly, oh, yeah. after the magician went into the forest and futzed around for a bit, sure. Gilles heard a clang. Some kind of foley going on with those foley artists. Clang. 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 Well, what was that then? Well, the magician then entered and said that he'd seen a demon <gasps> in the shape of a leopard. No but shit. <laughs> No fucking shit. No shit, dude. He saw a leopard. No shit. Saw a leopard, but... A leopard or a leopard? Is, leopard. Problem is, didn't want to talk to me. Ah, didn't want to talk to me. He just He's walked on by. But they saw a cat and no. called it a demon, and they <laughs> said he did his job. No, no, no. Leopards are stuck up. Yeah. Well, sure that's they are. He knew that it was a demon because it gave him a disdainful look. It's a yeah. cat. <laughs> yeah, that's what cats do. Yeah. That's no, most but, of their life no, they're going... But, it's the equivalent of eye rolls. Yeah. Mm. If cats could, I mean, oh, big cats, they'll, they'll, if they were allowed near our nuclear facilities, they would knock all the nukes off the shelf. They'd they, be horrible. They would. And, but that's the thing is that Thank Gio you. was like, okay, okay, fine, fine. So they went back to the castle and got drunk. And the next day, the magician was like, hey, Gio, give me, give me 20 gold coins. I just Why? need 20 gold coins. What'd you I need 20 gold coins. I just need 20 gold coins. I'm good yeah. for it. I'm good for it. Yeah, I'm good Here's for it. fucking 20 silver coins. You make it gold. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what thing is I need some gold as an example yeah. so I can show the silver what it needs to be <laughs> and so Jill said fine here take it and the guy just fucking left Never, Fuck. he never saw him again god it is just this. Is, you know what it feels like what, the, the way David Spade describes his home but he was like what he was talking about because he got robbed several times and yeah. he's just like all I do is I let these strange women in on my house. I, mean, I don't know who's in my house. And it just feels like that, where he <laughs> just lets careful. people yeah. in and out of his home. Yeah. Now, that guy had obviously been a scam artist, and it's almost positive that every single one of the magicians who came to bilk money out of Gilles de Ray were in one way or another a charlatan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And pretty much, if you could get Gilles to even half-heartedly say, like, wow, like, wow, then you were guaranteed at least a couple of gold coins. All right. I can make him say wow. Yeah. A how. Are you going to make Gilles de Ray say, He's wow? He's just going to fucking that gape his something. asshole. He's going to bend over. I mean, I'd figure like, something out. Take a look at that hole. Take, take, take a look at that. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something like that. But while magicians slid in and out of Gilles' life for at most a few days at a time, mm. a magician named Francois Prelati okay. settled in for the long game. Oh, yeah. Vivid, brilliant, beautiful, and charming, mm. Prelati had first studied to be a priest, oh. but claimed to have mastered black magic and alchemy instead by the age of 20, meaning he knew the rules of both sides. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he could, he could appeal to every part of Gilles' spiritual journey. Okay. By the time he met Gilles de Ray, Prelati claimed to be an accomplished necromancer who had called Satan into his service many times over the course of his career. Tell me more. But these days, Prelati claimed to be working exclusively with one demon. Yeah, I got a contract now. Yeah, I'm kind of contracted one guy. Yeah. one guy. One. Prelati claimed that with the help of a French doctor named Jean de Fontenay, he had summoned a demon who appeared as a handsome man in uh -huh. his mid-twenties wearing a red cloak named Baron. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there he is. 
Supposedly, for the paltry price of a chicken, a dove, or a pigeon, Baron you make, could you be... You try to make a joke there? No. I, I poultry mean, price? Yeah, a pigeon... Well, he said poultry. If he said poultry price. Poultry price. But he said price. poultry price. Poultry price. Not no, poultry. I, was, I wasn't trying to that make was a pun. pun there. I thought no. you were making a pun. I, I wasn't. Thank you for thinking of me, though. No problem. Uh, that poultry is a, price of a chicken. The, the pol- I would have walked away. The poultry poultry I would have walked away. I would have walked out the, the street. The poultry yeah. price of poultry. Exactly. That would have been better, yeah. Uh, uh, damn it. But pigeons not necessarily poultry. The pigeon's a squab. Think about what I would write when you write. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. Oh. I like bird life. <laughs> Newbies. <laughs> For just a bird, Baron could be summoned at Prelati's will, which was a claim that both baffled and impressed Gilles de Ray. Let's See, just say, I love birds. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Okay, <laughs> call me a nest. <laughs> See, Gilles had come to believe that he just had bad luck summoning demons. Hey. But Bray Lati told him that the demons were actually ignoring him because DeRay had a bad reputation amongst the damned as a Wait. man who promised much to the pit but never delivered. But maybe so it's demons- like when you're when you're trying to talk to somebody who's on like farmerdate.com mm-hmm. and you'd be like, listen, you need to put the hunting picks up top. Yeah, oh, like, you sure. know, like, for a farmer, I'm date. looking at your old like summoned demon pretender bullshit. Right. You need to put a couple of these bird picks up top because up top, demons top. love these fucking birds. They so love the demons birds. are mad that he's not doing enough bad stuff. No, that he's well, they're he's mad, not given enough. They're not even that they, what do they he's want? given enough is that he told them that supposedly he told them that he would give them something and that he never followed. Through yeah, but what's the promise. demon one? It could have been a bird. It a really bird. It seriously could have been nothing more than a pigeon. Uh, it's it's about, about the thought. What prelates? Yeah. What is going? Why are these demons like this? It's about is there the like thought. a demon Valentine's Day that I'm fucking you kind missing? of like. You do sort of need to. You have to court. You have to court these demons if you want them in there. You got to give out gifts. You have to do these things. No, they didn't get any gifts. See, this is the issue. This is the, this <laughs> is what we all have to talk about. It's about the didn't get any gifts. Kissel. It's about stopping and thinking for just a moment mm-hmm. for someone outside of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why and do I like, have to You know who would love and, this? You know who would love this magnet, Baron. <laughs> you know who love this? Yeah, being Welcome like to Oklahoma. when you're in the airport, you see the like you know like best demon supplicant award. You're like, <laughs> all right, yeah, just even just that, being like it's you're that. thinking of him. Yeah, that's it. That's just a little thing, just a little reminder, just a little thing. All right, fine. Well, I think what Prelati was trying to say was like all these other magicians you've been working with, they've been doing it wrong. They've been doing and because it wrong. they've been doing it wrong, you've got a bad reputation. So now you're talking to me, bud. You're talking to a guy who's got a demon on tap. Yep. Wow. Okay. I fixed James Franco with the demons. Great. I fixed. <laughs> I, I, I'm working on yeah. Tom Size where he's dead. He's, he's dead. dead. He might be a demon now, actually. Now, Bray Lati had always kept his promises to demon kind. So he stayed at the low, low price of a bird. He never had to get more than a bird. Oh, just one bird. But Bray Lati told Gilles that since he'd broken his promises in the past, whether it was his fault or not, mm. he had to make up for it with something far more important. A little boy. Mm. Now, it's unknown uh-huh. how much Bray Lati knew about Gilles de Ray's proclivities when he made this suggestion, but he might as well have asked Gilles to pick up a fucking gallon of milk on the way home from work for all the effort it took him to sacrifice a child to the devil. He's oh like, my. no shit. <laughs> what? Actually, oh, that's it? It would be more difficult in that time period to get a gallon of milk. <laughs> this is kind of one of those things where I think that Bray Lati definitely knew what was up mm-hmm. and there was, we'll get into a little bit more about their relationship about whether or not it was one of those where you give a little sucky sucky mm-hmm. to the big guy right and you go like oh, i'm just a little guy oh, i'm just a little boy you know what i mean like you do that thing to get him going right mm-hmm. but then but he just sure. asked he's like but for this it's like we'll just need some children's parts yeah but the way he said it he said it kind of like you know, wink. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, fucking Jill showed up to the next session with a hand, a heart, the and the eyes and the blood of a little boy. No oh. questions at 3 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. I'll get your heart by 3 p.m. Yeah. And Bray yeah. didn't question where Jill had sourced any of these ingredients no, and forbid. instead began the summoning. Still nothing happened. Nothing happened. He brought you the heart, the eyes, the hand. The hand. Come on. What else do you need? He's like, at least they're doing something with it. Yeah. Prelati could, however, apparently invoke Baron, which, considering how Baron appeared as a 25-year-old man, suggests to me that Baron the Demon might have just been some guy who hid in the yeah. corner and jumped out when he was summoned. Yeah, I've, you think that, you, you, or what's the other option? That he was a demon. <laughs> that he was a demon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, then it's all made up. Yeah, or the that other option or, is yeah. that it's all yeah, made the, up. The other yeah. option is that Prelati just made it up in order to kind of save his own ass during the trial because he was a practicing black magician, which was punishable by death at the time. But okay. it does seem that b- those types of like scams, to question them, 
would actually mean you're questioning the very nature of God itself, which is in and of itself heretical to do at the time. So I think a lot of times yeah. these scams are played out loud and you're kind of forced by societal implications to act like this is real because if and, I and don't Jill would not want to do anything taboo. <laughs> nothing. No, because no. you know, technically his actions at this point were more just frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah. It is weird that that uh, b- game taboo. I bought it at Target and I opened it up and it's just a bunch of little underwear. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I've returned that. This is a fucking, this is, this is indeed taboo. You kept it? <laughs> Why do you still have it? What is happening? Why are you pulling it out of your pocket yeah, right please now? please just keep it. Oh, <laughs> why did you bring it to the studio? Just yeah. Keep that in your giant wallet. Mm, thank you. Live from your grave. Now, during these summoning sessions, Prelati would draw magic circles, burn aloe and myrrh, and Ugh. recite incantations such as this. I conjure you, Baron, Satan, Belial, Beelzebub, <laughs> by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by the Virgin Mary, Whoa. and all the saints to appear in person so that you may speak to us and fulfill our desires. It's me, Baron. Whoa, Baron. <laughs> wow. my, whoa, what a mysterious occurrence. Yes. Now, Gilles <laughs> bought all of this completely. He even began writing letters to Satan for <laughs> Prelati to deliver. He said, all I want for Christmas is a sled. Uh, <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong entity. <laughs> yes. No, I was right. You're um, thinking of Santa. Yes, no, I want the sled to be made out of child's foreskins. <laughs> That's also Santa. <laughs> <laughs> well, these letters said that Gilles would give Satan everything he wanted except for his soul or the shortening of Gilles' life. I think he was hinting that he'd offer up the sh- souls of children. Sure. Like, if you want me oh. to kill children, I'll do that all day I long. Got, I got that just don't ask my soul. Just don't ask for my life to be shorter. It's very Freddy Krueger. Yeah. However, I will say that it actually took a while for Baron to appear in front of Gilles. At first, there was no Baron at all. Mm. And Prelati said that he only appeared when Gilles wasn't in the room. Oh, he was like, when you're mean? gone, he comes whenever I want. He's, That's he's crazy. He's, he's, he's here. hanging out. He's That's here. But nuts. since the way that works. So I got a bad reputation. So we got to rehabilitate yeah. your reputation. Then he'll come. And eventually, Baron did appear with Gilles present. It was probably after Gilles began to hint that if it didn't work soon, if he didn't see something soon, right. then Prelati could get the fuck out. And also, okay. I think that at that point, Father Prelati, if he was asked to get the fuck out, he would probably be murdered. Maybe, but I don't see Gilles as like, he doesn't murder men. Yeah, he doesn't like them. In battle. Because straight up, it's because the kids are easier. Yeah, kids are easier. But once Baron appeared, Gilles was finally, after all this time, able to ask a demon for gold. That's yes. great. That's How cool. Do, yeah. It's yeah. just, first of all, he needs to be talking to a leprechaun. He doesn't even have the no, right answer. No, because you have to deceive you, a leprechaun, and then, and, no, and then they just constantly to, come. No, is that, no, you don't always have to deceive a leprechaun. I'm currently burning through leprechaun, the entire like lexicon the TV, of leprechaun right that's now. That's the movie series. Uh, that's canon. It is, that it is, is literally canon. the I Bible know. for leprechaun. Honestly, no, leprechaun understand. the movie series is just as valid as mm-hmm. Irish folklore. And there's okay. an entire I mean, museum I'm not in go Dublin. <laughs> there's a, my boy. But it is the same because, again, because they get really mad because they, they, it's a whole thing. You're supposed to get their gold if you find it, but you didn't ask the leprechaun, really. Yeah. But, you know, there are some deaths that the leprechaun granted those people. Like when a guy walked into that fan with his face and got it all chopped up, right? Yeah. And he thought it was a big set of titties. So for him, I mean, you know. He got deceived. He got deceived. But then he, yeah. He, but I was like, if you're going to die, it's, it's not that bad. He needs his gold. Yes. I mean. Leprechaun is awesome. Okay. So when you're in hospice, I'll make sure as you're dying to just have a, a, just a, a big fucking, thing. That no, I'm just, just going to put, it. I'm just going to put a fucking titties up on a projector. Yeah, that way you can I mean, on the ceiling, incredible. on the ceiling. So you don't yes. even you don't even have to look at you can just look straight up, Please. and that can Fantastic. be the last thing you see. Sure, I'm fine. Yes, with that. incredible. Please, yes, I want some. Yeah, cool. Whatever. All right, it's all good. Well, supposedly, yes. Baron gave Prelati a vision of a room full of gold, but told them not allowed to touch the gold just yet. No, that's for Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, and Gilles asked if he could see too. So Prelati led him to the room where the gold was supposed to be. But when Gilles entered the room, yeah. He claimed it's full of gold. No, he saw a big snake oh, the size oh, of a dog I with wings. It ate all the gold. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I no. I feel like there's a this was built up to something else. Yeah. I don't know whether or not this a is snake a snake the size of a dog. Yeah, yeah it's like it a was Henson strong. production. I don't know what this was. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Well, Gio got scared and ran away. Gio is yeah. a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, okay. yeah. 
Well, oddly, he's scared of magic. Yeah. Uh, he's scared of a lot of stuff other than killing children, apparently. Well, oddly, though, the room was filled with something that appeared to be colored gold, but it turned out that it was just some other substance covered in a tawny colored power. See what Prelad It was probably t- pollen. I mean, he must have been, Prelat T must have been working with Gilles' people too. I think at some yeah. point, just being like, they're all trying to just benefit from this paint thing. Just a bunch of fucking rocks. Because yeah. he's so outside of reality. Oh, yeah. I, I, there is something to that where everybody. Prelati knows what he's doing. Yes, he does. And all of the crew around him knows what he's doing. He and, and, and Gilles de Ray at this point is like a slobbering maniac. Yeah. And they know what they're doing because they're starting to fight amongst one another. Yes. Mm. I mean, Prelati, he supposedly received a beating from some demon, just like the previous ma- magician had. But as okay. it turned out, this beating was handed out by Father Andre Blanchet, the priest who had first been tasked with finding magicians. Blanchet had gotten jealous because he'd been excluded from all magical operations. He wanted to be in the room. Priest fight. Yeah, and Prelati had told Gilles that Blanchet was not to be trusted. And as it turned out, Prelati was right, because I would imagine Prelati is a very good judge of human nature. Blanchet was the first to betray Gilles at his trial. But even so, Prelati and Gilles continued working together until Gilles' capture, although it was all, of course, in vain. Well, it's just like, you're just surrounded by villains. Yeah. You don't think they're all not going to consume each other and then yeah. eventually consume you? Yes. Now, when the alchemy didn't work out for Gilles de Ray, his financial fortunes only got worse, and the other nobles who wanted his lands, castles, and assets began making moves. Chief among them was Jean V, the Duke of Brittany, Ooh. who wanted Gilles' lands because they were important strategically, supremely so. This is the the, the hook here. Yeah. About Gilles de Ray. Is he innocent or not? What is the what are the motives? Yeah. Well, who benefits from Gilles de Ray going down? They want his lands. Yeah. But they know, like, he's hemorrhaging money. Yeah. He's he is, and he is doing what is what this is where I feel like the true trends get aggression amongst his peers. Is, is that as a landed noble, there's a certain sense of seems to be, maybe I'm incorrect, this is my opinion, but it, from what I my read, so I might be incorrect, but who knows. But it seems that the idea is that because we are above society, mm. and we are the ones that are literally holding the structure of countries together, we're supposed to operate a certain way, right? Like, And this concept of you taking what has been new generations put together together tracts of land that we have been a part of, that we have been like also using and and that part of this kind of global community of nobles that have been working together are watching you flush everything down a toilet. Yeah. Right. And this shit, which is being, which is extremely sensitive areas for you. You're watching this guy start to really mess shit up. Yeah. And he's breaking all these unspoken rules. What do we do with this guy? Because again, he's a landed noble. It is very difficult to move against the landed noble yeah. because you need a bunch of reasons. Like, you know, you need like, was it Costas Belli, whatever. The what about he's killing and raping a bunch of kids? I mean, this ah. is, that's the thing. Is that's like, not good enough? Ah. It's, it's oh, it, only if it's a part of a whole. It's like a part of it. That's yeah. like one mm. thing they can use. That's and, a little piece. Well, that can be like the once you catch him and once you arrest him, that can be the main it's the tax thrust evasion. Of it. It's like it's it's their version of getting somebody right. on tax evasion yeah. for yeah. bigger crimes. He's yeah. Messing with people's money. Yes, he is, and it's not. And that's the thing is that yeah, these people did want his lands, but that does not necessarily mean that Gilles de Ray was not a child murderer. Yes, like it's, those two things are not mutually exclusive. No, they right. can want his lands, and he can be a child murderer. Oh. Yeah. At the same time, one of Gilles' You can be long- anything you want to be. Yeah, that's you what can this be. is all about. That's what this whole yeah. story is about. Mm-hmm. Well, at the same time, one of Gilles' long-term servants left his service. And soon after, the local peasantry began whispering about the terrible crimes that had been committed on Gilles de Ray's many estates. How'd they do that without social media? <laughs> Bards. <laughs> oh, they would talk? What? Yeah, they would talk. They would whisper. What? I think Suck. 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 The sounds of suck. <laughs> the hills are filled with the sounds of suck. This is actually very political. It's a political satire. <laughs> well, the first real threat to Gilles, however, came when he made the church truly angry. Uh-oh. In May of 1436, Gilles kidnapped his old tutor, a priest named Michel de Fontenay, for publishing a royal edict against Gilles, presumably for the trouble he'd made in creating the Church of the Holy Innocents. Father Fontenay was thrown in a dungeon for his troubles and was only released when the local bishop demanded his release. Amen. 
Gilles, of course, gave in without anyone really knowing what Gilles' actual plan may have been. It didn't seem to, there seemed to be no plan. It was just an impulse because he gained nothing from this entire episode except the further animosity of the church. That's the thing. Mm. He keeps pressing these buttons. Yeah. yeah. And, and everyone's again being like, stop. Like, yeah. it, like, the church you're, like you're being extra. None of us know why you're being like this. Especially right. his family. His family is all of his family saying like, fucking stop it. And they're hearing right. like they're because they're no like. Jean V is moving against Zare to take control of his strategically important lands. Gilles, however, was either unaware or unruffled because he still believed that he was going to discover the secret of the Philosopher's Stone that would give him unlimited wealth. I'm well, here to get go. us all out of this boy! <laughs> well, it's big if true. You know, if big he did, true. it would be fantastic. Really oh, that's what be. they're all saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's Elizabeth Holmes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. as such, he abandoned all interest in his estates and signed over power of attorney to his cousin, Robert de Bricaville, who had been one of the family members who had sourced children for Gilles. And interestingly, two people testified in Gilles' trial that five years before Gilles' arrest, they'd lodged a complaint with Robert de Bricaville because they'd discovered a pipe full of dead children at the castle Chantilly, oh not my. knowing that Robert was one of the men who would provided Gilles with these children. Jesus. Now, concerning those bodies, it was said in the trial that when Gilles lost control of his castle at Machcoul to Jean V, he panicked and ordered his servants to dispose of the bones of about 40 children from a tower near the lower halls of the castle. Allegedly, two noble ladies watched the removal and showed nor felt any horror or disgust at what they saw beyond the normal human reaction to decomposing flesh. Mm. They were far more concerned, it was said, that Gilles had lost the control of the castle to Jean V. Well, it's because it was their home. And yeah. It was where they worked. It's where It was their entire lives. And so the more people he was fucking over with what he was doing, the yeah. more people started... But Still, you know, as a as a helping class in this time period, I can't stick myself in the middle of these situations where I'm going to end up in that fucking pipe, too. Yeah. Like, we're all just decomposing flesh to this guy. This is, again, saying if all of this is real. It's like, if all of this is real. And he, I also don't think that Gilles de Ray would have... I don't know if he was a murderer of men and women. But I'm saying you... But you could see how... Oh, you'd, you'd think... think. You'd yeah. think this. There's 40 child, the bodies of 40 children being taken out from the walls of this castle. This guy might be dangerous. Yes. yes. He definitely they, slayed in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Serving <laughs> much. Yeah, but I it, clapped back. But it's the, <laughs> the it, this happened several times. It's, yeah. Again, is this real or is it not? I I don't know. It's a lot of people saying it. And he'd sell a castle. It's hundreds freak of out. people saying it. I mean, yeah. it's probably freak just out. true. They go it's... run. They clean it out of bodies and shit. Yeah, what and else would he was scurrying do? around trying to figure out what to do this while he's also like, and that costs money too. This yeah. is like the most human part of, yeah, you got to clean it out. Yeah. Yes. And once the bodies were taken away, they were burned in a huge pyre in the presence of Gilles, his cousin, his two manservants, and his two priests. And what ashes were left from this pyre, they were tossed into the water pipes at the castle Chantilly. Now, you may say that there was no way that these bodies could have been burned to nothing but ash without leaving something behind. There's no way these bodies could have been burned to ash (laughs) without leaving something behind. Thank you. Thank you. And if you said that, just like Ben said it, then you'd be on the side of the movement defending Gilles de Ray's innocence. Motherfucker. Yeah, I didn't what know what I was saying. You apologize. I was under duress. <laughs> See, no bones or clothes or anything was found at any of Gilles' properties by authorities as far as we know. Sure. It's not a matter of record. Concerning the many, many disappearances, it is the defender's contention that there is no more evidence that more children went missing around Gilles de Ray than in any other area during that time period. Because it was, after all, an age of death. It was full of plagues and wars. It was also the Little Ice Age. Famine. Oh, yes. You got famine, and the Hundred Years' War just ripped its way through the entire country. Then that was uh, 116 years over three distinct periods. Periods. Three (laughs) distinct. And so, there, yes, there was a lot of destabilization in the area, which is also, to me, again, but that also, for me, provides another smokescreen of why he was able to then hide everything because yeah. he had the time and the resources. But, you know. And let's not forget, one of the most popular pastimes was the Hunger Games. <laughs> and then, uh, my God. If yeah, and you know how many stocks, pots you can fill with bones oh, to seriously. make as much soup as possible? Uh, Probably a lot. Grind his bones to make my bread. Yes. Probably a lot. Soak his bones to make my soup. <laughs> yes. Mm, mm. Bone broth. No, I'm hungry. Well, therefore, according to the defenders, 40 children going missing over the course of eight years 
would not have been an alarming or unusual number. Sure. Okay. Uh, which I will admit is a compelling, if difficult to prove argument. Yes, it's as, I think it's as difficult as to prove as the other side. Yeah. And indeed, many more children than 40 may have gone missing because peasants and especially peasant children were seen by the nobility as lower beings who weren't even supposed to have emotions. It was, however, said that two of Gilles de Ray's family members found child skeletons after the supposed cleanup of the crime scenes, but they did little more than lightly question two of Gilles' servants before dropping the matter entirely. Yeah, because, to be honest, do you want to be the one to be like, <laughs> tell everybody, look what I found, when yeah. you have a man that is... So both sides for me hold water, where it's like I could see why you'd think, like, why it doesn't make sense, why there wouldn't be evidence, but I could also see that there's a heavy motivation for someone who finds evidence to not bring it forward. Yeah. See, to Gilles' family, their duty was to the property, and it was no more their duty to protect the peasants than it would be to tend to the pigs and horses. In fact, the horses were probably held in higher esteem than the peasants. Yes. But this castle at Machcoul was not the only place where Gilles was murdering children. There was also the aforementioned Castle Chantilly. See, Gilles had also sold Chantilly to Jean V, the Duke of Brittany, and he therefore again had to remove all evidence of his crimes before handing the keys over to the Duke. Right. Gilles' servant, Henri Griere, said that they had only two days to clean up the mess, and since there wasn't enough time to burn the bodies of dozens of children hidden in one of the towers, three of Gilles' servants stuffed the dead children into chests, tossed them on a boat, and floated them down the river to parts unknown. Oh my good supply chains. It's a way to do it. <laughs> now, once Jean V had control over the castle Chantilly, he had no use for Gilles. So it was time to get rid of him for good. And you can get those last little pieces left. Let's yeah. suck up everything else he's got. Mm -hmm. Jean V joined forces with the bishop who was pissed at Gilles for kidnapping the priest mm -hmm. and a guy who was still mad at Gilles about some shit that happened over a decade earlier during the Hundred Years' War. Okay. Now, Jean V and the others didn't particularly care that Gilles was murdering peasant children any more than they would have cared if he was fucking and murdering sheep. Yeah, they don't care. They don't, yeah. give, a, they don't give an H. Yeah. They probably would have cared more if he was fucking sheep. <laughs> Honestly, he was fucking the sheep. You're like... You need the sheep for mutton. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all full of cum. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I'm going to have to scrape well, you want to shear it. You want to shear it for the clothes. But this triumvirate knew that if they could brand him as a criminal, then they could confiscate all of his remaining lands and assets. Oh, oh yeah. And they have to, because, and they were like, okay, what do we know about Gilles? And I do believe that that's where there's a part of this where you're like, all right, it's time to pull the pedophile button. Mm -hmm. It's time to pull the pedophile Like, he's, yep. he, we're all done with it. We all know what he does, right? We're all sick of it, right? We've all done it with him. <laughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> yeah, we've all been there with him. I mean, probably most of them have. Oh, sure. And so Jean V ordered a discreet investigation into Gilles de Ray's sex life. And Gilles did not disappoint. Over the next couple of months, Gilles raped and murdered a teenager at a hotel in Nantes then raped and murdered another in a convent in Bornig. And this is all from witness testimony and people talking about kids basically going into a room with him and not coming out. But on the other hand, this is all also witness testimony by people hired by Jean V. Sure. So that in itself makes it somewhat suspect. Okay. Was there a glove that did or not fit on his hand? <laughs> I mean, he had the gauntlet. <laughs> okay. Well. But days later, Gilles made a big show of saying that he was going to change his sinful ways and he was going to make a pilgrimage into the Holy Land. So he's he going to cleanse it. himself. Uh, well, at least to his crew, you know. This is okay. the thing: is that this is, this is re that is real. So there are interior things that Gilles Deray is doing to also show that whatever it is that he feels guilty about, he's going to try and fix. And yeah. He's okay. telling everybody, he's like, "I'm, I'm going to rehab." Yeah, I'm he's doing he's, the rehab. He's doing thing. the thing. I'm going to sex. I'm I'm addicted to sex. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm addicted. He's doing what David Duchovny did. You yeah. remember when nah. he had to beg for all of our permission? Let's not forgiveness? give Duchovny. Let's not bring him into this. I'm just saying sexual it's, dynamo. From what I've heard, yeah, yeah I, I hear that too. It's more like against Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. very much. Yeah, so. yeah it's again like Kevin Spacey. Quite a bit. But instead of going to the Holy Land, he raped and killed a 13 year old boy, and he killed uh, these two young brothers that he just found. That was just because that was his. He didn't. We didn't know that was code. Going to the Holy Land was code <laughs> for him doing. Yeah, right. At the same time, Gilles had returned to raiding the countryside in direct opposition to what King Charles VII wanted from his nobles. See, remember before where I said that, you know, going into the Hundred Years' War, the third phase, 
of the Hundred Years' War. Thank you. The, the, all of the, Fr- the French kingdoms were many different kingdoms. It was not one unified front. It was a I, bunch of different nobles with I, their own little villages, their own, you know, little castles and so on and so forth. Apparently, I was right when I said that it's similar to Italy. Ah, very good. Wow. That's nice. Good job, Henry. You know what? I didn't tell you you were wrong. I just said I didn't know if you were right. But isn't that something? <laughs> Someone told me he was right. That's good. That's that is, very that good. Very I'm good. happy That's for you. You, do you have, did good. You do, you do have that good boy look on your face right now. <laughs> yes, you did. Quite you good. got this. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Well, by this time, the king was trying to end all that. He was trying to legitimize his rule by forming a standing royal army instead of having to rely on private armies paid mm-hmm. for by nobles like Gilles de Ray. He didn't want to depend on people like him anymore. He's realizing this might be these liabilities yeah. that I have to deal with are actually getting, they're piling up. Yeah, and we're not going to say that like Gilles de Ray was the impetus for this decision, no. but he was certainly the largest example of what was wrong with the system. In other words, European feudalism was coming to an end. Mm. And this, of course, is one of the other things that lays at the heart of the conspiracy theory surrounding Gilles. In addition to John V doing his damnedest to snatch Gilles de Ray's lands and castles, King Charles VII, I think, needed to make an example of someone. Yes. And a worthless troublemaker would have made the perfect target to show the rest of the nobles that if they didn't fall in line with what King Charles wanted to do with France, then their more nefarious habits might come to light as well. Well, Mr. King Charles, you think you've got me against the wall, don't you? Baron, attack! (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Baron! 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 Ah, Ah, That was a man. He's on lunch. (laughs) Yes, I think that was a man. Now, even though Gilles had lost control of Mashkur, this is... He still asked to, to stay there. Which is like, come on, let's just think about sad. this. What stops here? Like, <laughs> you won't even know I'm there. It's All right, like, big castle. It's like Cato asking OJ if he can stay. <laughs> yes. well, come on. Still a nice room. But perhaps there had been a flurry of activity. Rumors were quickly spreading amongst the local populace that Gio was a child murderer who openly practiced magic, which he was. Hey, I'm a successful child murderer. I am unsuccessful at practicing, <laughs> ma- practicing yeah. magic. But to them, he wasn't killing children for pleasure. That's not what they thought he was doing. That to them was beyond. They believed that he was writing a book using the blood of the children he killed. Well, now we're saying, like, once we get to, once you're past the lip of we think he's killing kids, everything else, you can kind of see why the imagination leads its way to. It runs wild. Was there an ink shortage or something? No, you had to write the book in the blood of children so you could get the attention of the devil. The book of shadows. And when you get the attention of the devil, if he was able to complete the book, then he would have the power to take any castle he wanted because he would be (laughs) invulnerable, (laughs) fueled by the power of Satan himself. Oh, my God. Everyone. Everyone, everyone knows that the devil only reads. I'm trying to think as a courier. Maybe just think about a funny joke if you're out there and you know fonts. Fonts. Um, uh, courier. Oh, courier. Not courier. He doesn't sure, read sure, Ariel. Sure, sure. He only reads Times New Roman. Times New Roman. Yeah, yeah. You know, he only reads Don't even Times get him started on Comic Sans. There you go. Or Thank Papyrus. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Honestly, most Satanists I know are into like car repair. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. all really into the right to repair movement. Yeah. It's because we're all our own kingdoms right. and our own gods mm-hmm. and we need to ca- handle our own territory. Right to re- Has that been taken away? The right to repair your own car? Oh, you yeah. see the John Deere? Yeah. The, right fought, to, the farmers is, just fought for that and they finally got it. Yeah, yeah it is actually a very big deal. And I'm on the side of the Satanists when it comes to right to repair because yep. I'm also on the side of the farmers. See? I'm on the side. I am as well. The right to repair. See, <laughs> he's a fear in his eyes. I saw the fear of the farmer in his I saw, eyes. I yeah. saw it. I saw it. He's afraid of Willie Nelson's vengeance. Mm, I am. <laughs> and yet, even though Gio was under investigation, he continued killing children. Or at least it was a funny little coincidence that children seemed to be going missing wherever he happened to go. Okay. However, it wasn't child murder that got Gilles arrested. Rather, the downfall of Gilles de Ray had to involve something that could be proven. Some grand event. Something that the nobility could get behind. Something that could take away all of Gilles' money and power. Hmm. And that occurred when Gilles engaged in banditry for the last time. In 1439. This is one of my big arguments, is that they didn't even need the child murdering, like, charge. They didn't even need it. They already had something on him to fucking fully bust him up. What is banditry when when your stepdad joins a Steely Dan cover band named Steely Tom or or some other thing? (laughs) It's been a longer series than I expected. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, it's a lot. Fly from your grave. 
For acting on the advice of the demon Baron, oh. who again may he's or may not. Have, yeah, yeah, he's just the guy. He's now he's hanging out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, Prelati is still there. And okay. like, and so Gilles is like, what do I do? What do I do here? Uh, what do and I get so, now? Because now, honestly, Jesus. I've hired Baron. Yeah. He's hanging out. Right. And he's just hanging out being like, is this your cereal? Like, he's that dude. He's yeah. like the third. We had that in our apartment in Tallahassee. I remember when we let our buddy Palin let his weird friends start to like it started like they just want to sleep in the couch. Yeah. But eventually let the boy sleep in your bed. They're just hanging out yeah. and they're they're eating your stuff. They're, they're all taking the, time. the mirrors off the bathroom you can imagine they, how they would like to do Adderall <laughs> on it. Shit. Henry must have been so so angry when he saw them eating all of his food. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was broke. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have another money to spend on it. Oh, I got grew it. They meant all, fucking a lot. I was all the ice cream that I could I afford was fucking, this You're making fun of the poor. <laughs> this is the month that I was able to get Hagen does instead of yeah. Turkey Hill. I had nothing. I had nothing. And the yeah. man that was supposed to be the first stage manager for Murderfest, he had deceit and malice tattooed on his arms. And then he stole my last package of bologna. That is real. And then mist disappeared in the night. He was real. That is a problem. <laughs> well, again, acting on the advice of the demon baron, Gilles decided to gather 70 men and retake the castle at saint Antienne de Merle Moore. Whoa. From John the Fifth's treasurer after Gilles had sold it to him. It's kind of like he was like, you know what, man? I used to be fucking hardcore, yeah, man. Yeah. Like I used to do this shit, man. Mm -hmm. Why am I sitting here with why am I playing with money? Money's fake, bro. Yeah. I should just go fucking get my shit. Yeah. But he sold all of his rights to everything. Of course. Yeah. But it, but he wanted to retake it. Nah, it's fucking mine, bro. It's one of those things Ugh, where it's like, no, so you stupid. cheated me. You cheated me. I sold it to you, but you cheated me. So now I have the right to take it back. And he burst into the church riding a horse yes. with a double-edged battle axe. <laughs> yeah, fuck cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he allegedly shouted, quote, You thieving scoundrels, you have beaten my men and extorted money from them. Come outside the church or I'll lay you out dead. Yeah. Wow, bold statement. Very bold. Mm -hmm. He then captured the brother of Jean V's treasurer, and he captured a priest, and he threw both of them into a dungeon before taking control of the castle himself, thereby committing three transgressions that together were enough to bring Gilles de Ray down. Wow. By marching into the church, he'd violated ecclesiastical property. By imprisoning the priest, he defended church law. By dispossessing the owner, he'd attacked a member of John V's household. And when you combined all that into one, Gilles' enemies had all they needed to move against him. Wow. And he hit somebody when he was going down a ski. When he was skiing <laughs> on a that ski That was the worst weekend. part. That and then his the skis worst. went between the her legs. Wow. And wow. Groan. She heard the groan. The groan. Wow. So this, out of all the horrible things this man has done, it's trespassing and false imprisonment of mm -hmm. a douchebag. Yes. Yeah. Trespassing, false imprisonment, and a little bit of assault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Jean V levied a fine that Gilles couldn't pay. So all of his property and everything he gained through battle or by inheritance, gone in an instant. Wow. Then an official inquiry was set in motion to collect evidence from people who had lost children wherever Gilles de Ray had hung his hat. Gilles, meanwhile, knew nothing of the child murder investigation. So after You mean my hobbies are a crime? <laughs> How is it a crime? So after a meeting with Jean V that went particularly badly, uh, Gilles indulged himself by having his manservant, Henriet, take three children into a field outside of town so know, he could kill them. I'm just so stressed out. Could you just get three of those choir boys out there? I got to see some blood. Ay, <laughs> ay, ay. Maybe yeah. releasing their blood will wow. release my blood. Gilles then spent a short time in the country at the estate of a man named Le Moin where Gilles met with his priest, André Boucher. Boucher soon sourced a 10-year-old boy for Gilles to rape and murder. And what Gilles had done so, figured probably not a good idea to burn it on this guy's property. Uh -oh. It's not my house. So the corpse was tied to its own belt and lowered into the house's cesspool. Ugh. The body, however, did not sink all the way under. So manservant Poitou had to be lowered into the shit pit to Oof. shove the corpse under with his hands and feet. Oh, I thought you were going to say rescue the boy. No, 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 he's the body. Dead. I know, but dead. get the yeah. evidence. No, no. And that made one of Gilles' last murders particularly degrading. That's the, his second to last murder. Ugh. Finally, on July 29th, 1440, an edict was published against Gilles de Ray proclaiming that he, with certain accomplices, had slaughtered, murdered, and massacred in the most odious fashion several young boys, then had oftentimes taken pleasure against nature and practiced the vice of sodomy against them. Oh. 
Mm. It was also proclaimed that he oftentimes made pacts with the devil through child sacrifice. It's a very casual way of saying it. Yeah. yeah. Although that one's sort of incidental because Gilles did the vast majority of his murder outside of his black magic practice. Can you imagine that being that, having to yell at everybody, being like, no, listen, my black magic had nothing to do <laughs> right. with the kids. I was trying to make movies. Yeah, I think it all kind of goes together at this point. <laughs> but once this edict was published, Gilles thought to hell with it. Let's do one more. And he assaulted, murdered, and incinerated a young boy who just entered into his service after Gilles had his servant buy the boy a new doublet. And these these are the ones that hold the most water. Yeah. These last ones yeah. are the ones, like, the flagons well, all the of eyes children. Are on him. Yes, all the eyes are on him. And, like, these are the ones that he is doing, and now his, his crew knows we're all being investigated. But they're wow. all kind of just locked in. They're all just, uh, it was different... I don't know how to put it because it's not like nowadays where the FBI, you'll see them like the car out front and stuff. That's how you know if you're being tracked of a fucking Wi Fi signal shows up that you don't recognize inside of your own oh, home. Right. It's a good well, way to know if not something's looking for you. That's not necessarily true. It's a good way to actually, if you just really Are fucking think about who's the CEO looking for you. What if, TikTok what, right if, now? what if your neighbor just gets a new router? You so, fucking know, FBI tap, bro. Go over there and ask <laughs> them what's going on. Give me the password, dude. Let oh, me send shit. you a fax then. <laughs> right? Okay. Well, but let's like, not scare the audience. So you know. they don't know that they're fully investigating. Maybe, maybe that's part of what it, or maybe they're just like, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, maybe this is, you'll get out. Oh, Jill's going to figure us out. He's going to get us out. of this. Well, by this time, he doesn't have castles to hide behind anymore. So right. he's, so everywhere that Jill goes, he goes to a town. Someone gets murdered. A young boy gets murdered. He goes to another town. Young boy gets murdered. Everywhere right. he's going, a young boy gets murdered. The only other explanation is that one of Jean the Fifth's men is following Gilles de Ray and murdering young boys to, wherever to Gilles him. is to, to frame him. Well, which is, honestly, which one of these is more likely? As his defense attorney, let's talk about the word coinkadunk. <laughs> it could be a coinkadunk. Now, I don't mean this be a small country lawyer. Well, it's a coinkadunk. A, a is what? Uh, I'll do something. I'll suck them down to us. Point to a coinkadunk. And then he can be like, look at the shrubbery. It's longer. And then yeah, it was, sure. My, and mama, my look, mama is 475 pounds thin. <laughs> but yeah, just because she eats a Hunger Jack meal four, five, single, six, seven times a day, that's quink enough. That's How could I enough. find him guilty? His lawyer is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, Gio was finally arrested on September 15th, 1440. Uh. Because all the rest of the stuff... That just took away all of his money. Right, which is important. Yeah, which to, is big. I mean, it's just big. I mean, he could, I he could just be kicked to the curb. But yeah, they finally, it's like, okay, he's been murdering a lot of children. It's pretty obvious now. Yeah. His two cousins, they disappeared soon after. I see quite a few others. They said there were 16 accomplices. I think they ended up catching like five or six. I think I have actually, I think I'm in a flu. I better go. I'm just going to go now. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. But the priest Blanchet, the magician Prelati, and the manservants Poitou and Henriet were captured, as was the roaming witch known as the Terror. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's cool. She's lame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gilles' public trial began within a month, and a formal indictment of 49 paragraphs was read, 34 of which enumerating Gilles' murderous crimes in great detail, while also outlining all of the sacrilegious dealings he'd had with various sorcerers and heretics. Because now they're just piling on, too. Yeah. I do see that that's where you can have a little bit of suspicion because they are. They're stuffing it yeah. to try to, like, get him. They're yeah. trying to find Trying to get him on something. Yeah. And they're making it sound as horrible as they possibly can. Yeah, I mean, it sounds pretty horrible. Yeah. But yeah. they're, they're exaggerating yeah. even what's already horrible. They're exaggerating even that. But that's how they got to the exaggerations. Yeah. Was that there was something for it to grow from. But, you know, but it, this points to a lot of people. That's where, like, the exaggerating part my thing is that again, absolutely. If, if you give, but truly, if you get Epstein bought an island to have sex on, yes, you know what I mean. Like it is, there is, there is a precedent. Yes, Tom Hanks. This. Tom Hanks collects typewriters. There's a difference. Wow. There's a difference. You know, like there, there's, there's a, a difference. difference. You Take can it look to Twitter, boys. You can look at the things that men do, and you can extrapolate from the things that men do into what you know History possibly and, they may do. Yes, what yeah, what humans may do. Mm -hmm. Oh. Now, the innocent side claims that the main focus of the plot against Gilles de Ray was the legal land snatch. But there were also political reasons. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but there were also political reasons for smearing Gilles as a pedophilic child murderer. See, the Hundred Years' War wasn't over just yet by the time Gilles went on trial. And the Duke of Brittany had close ties with the English throne. The Duke of Brittany, of course, was Jean V. Gilles de Ray was, of course, still closely linked with Joan of Arc as this was before he was eradicated from her history. 
Joan, meanwhile, was still considered a heretic by some, and even some in France, particularly Burgundians. Yeah, oh, the damn Burgundians. They, balls over well, She beat the hell out of yeah. them, didn't she? And Charles VII had been crowned king, but he was still a little wobbly. Therefore, if Gilles were to be found guilty, then it could be said, or at least whispered, that King Charles VII owed his throne to the heretic Joan of Arc and the black magician child murderer Gilles de Ray. Oh. And as it was, Gilles did refuse to even reply to the charges when he was first brought before the court. Oh, yeah. Saying that the judges had no authority over him. But after Gilles was, quote, put to the question, which was the medieval term for legal torture, Gilles changed his mind. Oh, yeah. The, when the Inquisition showed up, that is fun because it's kind of like if you dropped John Wayne Gacy into Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, right? he like, wouldn't do well. But you know what I mean? Like, you have this guy that is, if this is real, because this is my take, is that if he is this kind of, like, psychopath, warrior, child murderer, but then you just been like, okay, We'll talk to a couple members from the Inquisition, and then you can hear me go like, wait, let's just think about it for a second. <laughs> let's think about it. And yeah, this is, of course, another point taken by the innocent side. The Gilles was coerced into a false confession by torture. But on the other hand, I don't know if this necessarily washes, because Gilles was, after all, a seasoned battlefield veteran. He was an absolute demon, by all accounts, who could take pain. So... It seems weird that he couldn't survive torture for longer than a day. Well, it's the, I mean, in he the was transcript. With the, this is where the issue is. It's stuff where it is both a, a highly like detailed transcript of the trials. There are also parts that are left out. Yeah. And what we do know about the way things are transported, because there was no stenographer. No. They are written from memory after the fact. So everyone, you hear kind of a bass and you rip it up. So there is a pause in the coverage. The Inquisition shows up. There's like a day where it's never said implicitly that he was tortured. We are inferring that he was tortured. But there's some people, there's the other side that they think that he wasn't tortured at all. Mm. And this was a negotiational tactic of like, if you give us a win for the church, if basically plead guilty, we will not desecrate your corpse when you die. Yeah. And we will, you can legally tell everyone you're going to heaven. Well, yeah, if basically we will allow you to die as a Christian. Yes, we'll oh. allow you to die. And so there's this moment in time, I mean, like, so was he coerced by actual physical punishment or is it just appealing to his, like, this weird inner spiritual thing that he has said before that I'm trying to fight for my immortal soul? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, and it could also be that Gilles just finally realized that the game was up. There's no point in prolonging the inevitable. Why am I going to go through days and days and days of torture when I know what's going to happen at the end? It's right. already done. It's done. Yeah, the yeah. torture is bad. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be tortured. One day is a lot. Yeah, one day Oh, is no, lot. and it's old school, dog. Yeah, yeah I've, it's I've the, seen those museums. Yeah, it's the pair. It's the rack. Ooh, you know? yeah. It's the wheels. You know? And you kind of think for a while, like, that's the other thing, is that I kind of weirdly think you'd like it. I no, know. I don't think so. Mm, Pair is very scary. Well, to the that, pair is scary. Yeah, they're all pretty scary. Well, to that point, during the trial, Gilles agreed that he had killed children, but had only done so for eight years, not the 14 that he'd been accused of. But on the other hand, Gilles might have also said this to save the reputation of Joan of Arc, because if he admitted to all 14 years, then that meant that he was murdering children while he was at the side of a saint. Yeah, well, so, so he eight wanted... Is, eight is enough. Eight, eight is enough. <laughs> yeah. But he eight also, he wanted to... Yes, I think that there was something about preserving that time period, too, for himself. Yeah. Gilles also denied sacrificing children to the devil and said that he committed his crimes, quote, in accordance with his own imagination and thought, following no man's counsel but his own, solely for his pleasure and carnal delight and with no other end in view. And to me, that is a fucking classic serial killer confession. Oh, yes. Yeah. Being like, this is all me. It's well put. Oh, it's yeah. It's very well put. But it is, I mean, you hear those confessions in modern times. Right. You, that's how that was BTK's that was, confession. Absolutely. You know? And then dispassionately talking about all of the details. Yeah. And one by one, Gilles' accomplices, when they could be found, they gave their confessions and they were condemned to mm. death. Chief among them, Boitou and Henriet. That's my one thing is that, like, it, they all knew they were going to death. Yeah. Like, so... If you're why, going, yeah, if what's you're, the point? Yeah. Like, what, why are you, what, what, there's there's no point to like, I know that you're trying to save yourself in one way, shape, or form. You're trying to save yourself, but still, like, you all know you're going to death. Why throw everybody under the bus yeah. for no reason? Yeah. Well, you, you want to have fun. It was fun to bring people with you. It's <laughs> hard because you're also getting people that are just screaming at you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, yeah. it's not a fun process, the trial. Yeah. Well, Poitou and Henriet, along with Gilles de Ray, they were sentenced to be hanged and burned on October 26, 1440. Gilles, however, 
asked that he be hanged and burned first, quote, mm. so that he might set a good example. Are and you a hung then burned or burned then hung? Hung then burned. I, hanged? I thought it was burned then hanged. I believe it is hanged. Then body is burned. Body is burned. Because I one of the things that I read said that his body was lit on fire and then they hung him. But that also tells you rope's probably going to burn, too. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's possible. I'm on your side, Henry. Thank you. Yep, it's possible. <laughs> well, he also wanted his men to know that he wasn't going to try and escape their shared fates. Mm. Oh, yeah. And then again, I'm the... And also, who's the star here, baby? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But... Gio was hanged, Gio was burned, and after he died, his body was removed and laid out by four noble ladies of the town who pampered his dead body as it had been pampered in life. He still died a noble. Oh, yeah. Good they get, and that was his plea deal. Mm -hmm. As far as the other accomplices went, the magician Prelati was condemned to life in prison because magic was very much illegal. I mean, it was publicly, uh, people used it and talked about it, but it was still like illegal. It's like weed smoking then. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably just want to be killed anyway. Life in prison probably sounds horrible there. No, no, it was bad. bad. bad, But he did manage to escape. Oh. But he was later hanged for unrelated crimes. Never stop, never Mm. stop. He did get to escape, though. Yeah. Here's an interesting one. The priest, Blanchet, he was simply fined and banished from France. And finally, Le Mifre, the terror, hanged herself in her cell like a Nazi. Wow. Uh, it's also uh, epstein Yeah, very mm-hmm. epstein And as it went, Gilles de Ray lived on as a French boogeyman for centuries. The original Bluebeard, as it were. And his castles became dark tourist destinations in the Breton region. As such, in 1992, the Breton Tourist Board commissioned author Gilbert Protu to write a biography on Gilles de Ray to drum up more business. Yeah, man, come on. We need more pedophile visits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but much to the Tourist Board's surprise, when Protu published his book, he instead made the case that Gilles de Ray was innocent. Oh, he was that's the first good for tourism. W- he was the first one to come. Well, Protu is also a famous, how do you put it? He's a mischief maker. Yes, a provocateur. He's wow. a provocateur. So they handed him this thing, expecting him to write a t- little tourist hit. Like, literally, like, where we can see all the, the you know, the points of interest of Gilles de Ray. And he was just like, I'm going to kind of hijack this for myself. And I'm going to prove he's innocent. And I'm going to write a book. And I'm going to sell it across the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the defense testimonies weren't found in the minutes of the trial. Mm -hmm. The page containing Gilles' confessions weren't signed by the presiding judge. And the victim count varied too wildly, from 80 to 800. Mm. But as far as that last point goes, there's a reason behind that. It was said to be 80 because his accomplices testified that they'd removed 40 bodies from one castle and 40 from another. But it was extrapolated to 800 because of the way the indictment had been written. The indictment said that he had more or less for 14 years, every month, every day, every night, took, killed, and cut the throats of children. Which is not. He was actually, he was busier than that. He was. was, He definitely didn't, he wasn't entirely devoted to that. He had to pick tapestries. He was running (laughs) choreography. He was doing doing a lot of Mm -hmm. shit at that time period. But perhaps the most important fact brought up by Pro Du was that King Charles VII himself had asked in vain for Gilles' judgment to be revised just three years after the death of Gilles de Ray. Hmm. On that last point, however, I think it may have been more about rehabilitating Joan of Arc than it was about exonerating Gilles de Ray. I know. I dug deep into this. So Charles VII did do that, but it was really, it was in and out. They fully exonerated Joan of Arc in 1450. It was like in the early 1450s. Once France was more unified. So to be honest, this is my major kickback is that I feel like they also would have went really far to exonerate anybody that was remotely attached to Joan of Arc. Yeah. But instead, they did the opposite, where they they truly, a real version of canceled someone, which has made sure that they were basically erased from history for a period of time. They just, like, cut them out because they couldn't do it. Because when they went and uh, made Joan of Arc a saint, in the 1920s, they also tried to exonerate Gilles de Ray then, and that only lasted for a couple of days. Yeah. Because still, like, 95% of medieval historians, there are some, this, the idea of him being innocent is, is thought about because of these flaws, because these holes in the trial and the coverage of the trial, but 95% of medieval historians still think that he's guilty because of essentially, it's the Church of the Holy Innocents. Yeah. It's like, he public, once you make a public molestation university. 
Well, like, he didn't necessarily, he didn't tell everyone, hey, I'm bringing in kids here and molesting them. It just, uh, it was obvious. <laughs> it was very <laughs> obvious. No one yeah. wanted, because somebody would have legitimate it, you know, legitimize yeah. it. If it was, I really do believe that. He was too important. He had too much money. More people would have showed up being like, let's make this church legit. Yeah, and he could have just given the church, like, here's a fucking, here's a thousand francs. Yeah, like, here you go, boom, it, yeah. here's your vig. Yeah, here's you your can, vig. Yeah, you can have it. You, you're a part of it, but he yeah, would. the Catholic church at this time was not what you'd call uh, fucking ethical. They were, uh, mm. they've never met. But they felt like the, <laughs> the idea, but at that time, it was a, at least at that point, you know, at least the ethics were straightforward. Mm -hmm. And you could just buy shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of pretending like you needed to worry about your soul or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, soon after publishing his book, Brotteau hosted a tongue-in-cheek retrial of Gilles de Rais at the Luxembourg Palace in Paris. This is about 1992. And it ultimately acquitted the world's most notorious child murderer as not guilty. All right. Not we, guilt. Not guilt. Boom. But while we do certainly respect the people who believe de Rais is innocent in their passion and in their research, we ultimately believe that there was just too much blood pooling around the feet of Gilles de Rais to say that he was nothing more than a victim of political circumstance. He definitely didn't murder 800 children. But considering the number of kids who went missing in his presence, especially at the end, it doesn't seem worth it to rehabilitate the image of a child murderer, whether the number is one or 100. Yeah, because even right. if you murder one... <laughs> Everybody gets on your fucking case. Well, absolutely. <laughs> Shield array. There it is. It is a lot. A tale I, I was, of noblemen gone wrong. But I will say that is, again, it's what I love about history, especially yeah. this time period. I do love that it's about when you're a historian, you're a storyteller. Yeah. And what you got to do is mm -hmm. you got to look all these different perspectives in the face and wonder and ask yourself because it's objective knowledge to. of these time period even capable are we even able can we get it i don't know but did that's the time why, like, period even exist <laughs> did it even exist there's a whole exist, yeah. series of thoughts saying that we're 300 years earlier than we're supposed to be Boom. Yeah. right but you the, that's why like read into it like i'm fascinated by the pushback because i read it i was like it, we talked about it as we went through the research of like there is points here but you know who knows mm -hmm. you, you just never know what someone is capable of well, with no sense of decorum and nothing but resources i think it's important we trust the legal system yeah and he is guilty well he is a murderer yes. and at least he is guilty of wasting during a theatrical production yeah which comes out of the actor's pocket it does and it's unfortunate and he's a horrible person and he's french um, so there we go. So that's it. It's a horrible person. <laughs> and and he's, he's French. French. We're we're fine with France. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like French. Yeah, French is cool. Yeah, uh, they're France they're... is cool. I've been to we went to France this year. It was cool. Yeah, honestly, yeah. though, I barely remember. We were only there for like three days. And I then we, I was just mostly like I felt like I was in the National Lampoon's European vacation yeah. where I like I ran to the loop. <laughs> that's it. We ran over the Eiffel Tower. It that's the Eiffel Tower. It's yeah. tiny, isn't it? It did feel like that. The but Eiffel there were is huge. It's oh, the Louvre. The Louvre is fucking huge. Is different. So fucking massive. All right, everyone. Thank you all so, so much for good. listening. Thank you for these. Uh, thank you for the great comments, Gilles de Ray. That is it. Nine Thanks hours everyone who came of French history. Out. Thanks to everyone who came out to uh, WonderCon, too. We had oh, so yes. much fun. So much fucking uh, awesome. fun. Yeah, like, it was so cool to go to a fucking con that's, like, truly nerd-based. so fun. That Great like, costumes. It's not about celebrities, and it's not about stupid bullshit. It's just about having fun and talking about nerdy shit with other nerdy fun. people without... You know, feeling embarrassed about it. It, it was so really cool. great. So, yeah, so yes. cool. It was just, it felt like a, a legit con. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, it, it felt like it was so cool to well, meet you know everybody. What I liked? Less police barricades. <laughs> there, there <laughs> really is. Yeah. There's just so many barricades. It's just so like, scary. You go through and I'm like and scared at Comic Con half yeah. the time, but this is nice. It was this, really, really it was fun. so nice. Yes. Um, so, thank you all so much. Go to getitmade.la slash disaster man to see Kissel and I do a side yes. story slide in support of a little project I'm working on. Um, there's a lot of people asking That's questions. April 8th? That's April 8th. If you want to buy alcohol for the show, pay attention to my stupid ass social media. I'm going to pump, I'm going to put How it up on the stories. Is this? I'm just going to put the most the link. complicated thing we've talked about in this whole series. Yes, it is. Just, let, <laughs> just know it's not. It's, it's not always going to be like this. I'll, I will admit, like one of the most surprising things about moving to California. I've been here for about four or five months now. Is just how fucking incredibly complicated everything is. I mean, dude, nothing's you, easy. Here. New York is than, very similar. Besides the fucking, it'll be just don't go to Universal. That's for fucking <laughs> copious Maybe. amounts of weed is easier. Yeah, yes. that's that's much easier. But yeah, I guess I just got used to the rules of New York City. But yeah, here this is a baffling town. Well, sometimes. that's not necessarily true though, because here you can get wine, liquor, and beer in the same store. Yes, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. And scratchers. 
Ooh, scratch <laughs> scratchers. <laughs> That's next show. Um, we do a I'm whole just, episode on scratchers. You're, you're saying that no. California healthcare is a labyrinth of nightmares. Oh, uh, oh, that's yeah. different. That's, healthcare yeah. is something else talking, entirely. So, yeah, yeah. That's you're nightmares. talking about something serious. Yeah. Yeah. No, we just, that was, yeah. I just get burgers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you're doing well out there. Hail yourselves. Hail Satan. Again. Magustalations. The times are tough, but honestly, I would rather live now than then. Oh, hail me, man, because I don't yeah. want to fucking go back. No. I don't want to go to 1400s me, man. No, 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 no. no. Thank you all. Bye. 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 This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com. Yeah.